Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the PCP Crow Prastidators <laughs> Podcast. Oh, that? I fucked everything up. I don't know. I'm the best guy ever, though. And uh, thanks for joining us. Here we've got uh, we've got we've got Tom Oliver over here. Yeah, I'm here with my robot body. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, uh, the Davu is here. Still, just barely able to. St- juggle the scheduling and in, in monetary conflicts caused by having to do PCP responsibilities while hashtag saving the hamsters. <sighs> <laughs> they'll have uh, they'll have robot hamster body soon anyway. Uh, we've got uh, Hypocrite is here. Uh, I uh, identify as being a robot skeleton. <laughs> Good. And of course, Digibro. All I want is the android dong. <laughs> <laughs> android dong. Android Donk. Android Donk. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's, uh, so everybody, we're talking about, oh, I, I gotta introduce the show. So this is the Procrastinators Podcast, everybody. It's a podcast of a bunch of internet creators. We do YouTube stuff, some of us do comics, etc., etc. And here we are talking about various topics in this show here on the Procrastinators channel. And today we're talking about transhumanism. Today we're talking about transhumanism. And if you don't know what that is, luckily our boys over at Urban Dictionary have you covered. Let's Give it a read. Okay, that's a long one. I'm going to do the shorter secondary one. Hopefully this will be good. Okay. A postmodern theory that posits on the perceived benefit to mankind of having a Cuisinart installed in your rectum. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Oh, I don't even know what a Cuisinart. Okay, that one's stuck. <laughs> let's let's, let's, uh, the, no, I let's do the top definition. <laughs> uh, okay, here, here's one of the little more details. This is the top definition. Uh, transhumanism. A movement supporting the use of reason, science, and technology to advance and ex- enhance human abilities and existence under optimal conditions. Can be seen as an extension of humanism, but with much more emphasis on the future. Trans- Transhumanists believe that we should try to overcome our biological limitations through the use of such things as nanotechnology, cryonics, AI, mind uploading, space-time engineering, Jesus Christ, eugenics, whoa, 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 okay, Uh, Mm. and what not, and what, and what not in order to become post-human. I don't understand what that last part, I think that was a fuck up And what The only thing I like about that list was the eugenics. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh by the way i just want to give a shout out to our heroes at urban dictionary <clears throat> to which the pcp owes the entirety of its success i just yeah. wanted to shout them out as uh, their october 6th uh word of the day was boy splaining boy splaining oh, it's man it's mansplaining but immature that's that's what it is isn't that what <laughs> already mansplaining is that means that be? mansplaining is mature that means I... mansplaining <laughs> is the mature thing to do you fucked up Wait, urban uh, dictionary isn't boy splaining literally the entirety of the procrastinators podcast yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i agree it's a good point so very relevant so when transhumanism was brought up mm-hmm, as a topic mm-hmm. i was shocked that we haven't already done this because mm-hmm. i don't know about hippo but i know me and nate and tom and probably Devu are Correct. all like very big transhumans. Like yes. we all very trans. We all self-identify <laughs> as very trans, yeah. trans as trans humans for sure. Well, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we're not we're not transhumans, but we're 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 sympathetic to the cause. I don't think any of us are augmented yet. Uh, you know. To some extent, you could you people. I've heard people argue that human beings, as they exist now, uh, are are semi trans humans because I would agree. we have like our phones and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I fig- well, it's the thing I was gonna say is I think because mm-hmm. I think we've already interrupted evolution, like the evolutionary process of human. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. So mm-hmm. we're we're already like off the beaten path. So I just figured we might as well go full stop at this point. <laughs> And I mean, people, when, when transhumanism gets brought up, I feel like everybody imagines it as like robot parts attached to your body. But like mm-hmm. a lot no, of it's, it's way more than that. A lot of it's of chemical. And like we're all doing that shit. Like there is oh, nobody yeah. who is not ingesting some form of chemical that is performance altering in some yeah, way right. as to how including you got yourself caffeine. kinds of food. Like actually, uh, that, that, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Curse Gazette just did, came out with a video. Did you trying to establish smoking weed, his new hobby as trans, a transhumanist <laughs> act? If, if you've got yourself, <laughs> if you've got yourself a, a fly ass, bomb ass, dope ass hoe who, who you're nutting in regularly and she's taking that pill, <laughs> That is her being a transhumanist. That is her deviating <laughs> from her biological intentions. So every time you nut in your lady, just say, bitch, you're a robot now. <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah, uh, that's in that fact how just, I nut. I, 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 do, I, I feel like I have to, to mention that, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not really that into the future, the sci-fi 
I'm I'm more oh, into I'm no. more into the, the 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 past things like aesthetically. But if if transhumanism doesn't mean robot parts and it means all this mm -hmm. other stuff, then I don't know because I didn't know that. I I always assumed it was like looking way into the future to see all the cool stuff that was like uh, you know flying cars attack, uh, attached to your back and and yeah man and like <laughs> hippo, I know you're more into I don't know. Well, you could be the uh, you can be the surrogate for the audience. Who you, you, well, you know, we think, can dump our knowledge onto you. I think the reason I wanted to specify that that it's not far future is because mm -hmm. uh, it's more interesting to think about the stuff that we can do soon. You know, like mm -hmm. the ways that we're already making progress, and a lot of the transhuman stuff I'm most excited about is not just robot parts, but like I don't want to have to sleep anymore. Where, when oh, are we God. getting our anti-sleep mm -hmm. pill, you know? Or when are we getting uh, – um, Nate, I was glad you brought up uh, birth control because yeah. I was thinking about this. I I've been thinking about this all fucking day about what I'm going to bring into this podcast. Um, <laughs> that I think transhumanism could easily be mistaken as like a guy thing because we all – you know, there's stereotype guys love technology mm. and we want to fucking have a robe android dong, you know? But I was thinking about how – there's already pills that can, for instance, uh, make it so you don't have your period anymore and right, like, right. like fix PMS stuff. Yeah. I feel like women would jump right the fuck on that. Like, of it's in fact, it's far more common for uh, like like the, the 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 whole idea of female birth control is is like deeply rooted now in at least Western culture. But yeah. male birth control is like uh, like some movements actually oppose the very idea of it, which I think is sort of a, a play to like keep the sexual power in the hands of women. But we can get into my red pilling another time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so hippo, like I know well, you're more into the past, like pirates and shit. But in the future, we could potentially have pirates, but then also without polio ruining everyone's fun. So I'm just saying, <laughs> the future is really better for everyone. I know. I. I mean, I agree. I agree that some things are bad about the way humans are and the things that we have to deal with. But I like wood more than I like metal. That's just really what it comes down to. I like a pirate ship being made of wood. I don't want to see pirates with guns. Get out. That's, That's why not Apple a real put a wood texture if, skin wait, more quickly onto everything. Had guns. No, no, I mean, like, like, like modern-day pirates are like, oh, the, you know, in, uh, I don't like know. Like Somali mm. pirates or something. Somali pirates, yeah, they go on, they go on dinghies <gasps> made, filled with air and on, on ships made of metal with guns. Get out of here. You're not real. <laughs> you know, uh, so I don't I, I respect say... you because of that. If, if you had wooden boats, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> on the on the topic of just transhuman in general, okay, so so yeah, I, like I'm a gigantic fan of this. Like Ghost in the Shell is one of my favorite things of all time, and I want to yeah. talk at at least at some length. And I'm I'm so it's so cool to me that you brought up a, uh, like male versus women, just because Motoko is just such a role model to me, and it just represents all these great things about like Motoko is like a technological wizard who who is like a, a, ahead of the curve. Everyone behind her is like a regressive piece of shit, but Motoko is always thinking about how to like adapt to the situation she's in, and yeah. that that is inherent to a character as like the best cyborg user or like one of the best out there. But the what, what I wanted to say about this was there so many people when you bring up this topic like are struck with such a deep level of fear instantaneously yes. and i feel this is one of our like this is one of our like biological carryovers from uh when we were you know beasts of the field it's one of our it's just like a, this this instinct to be afraid of 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 change really and of the unknown because like whenever i think about this stuff in general I think about like okay, we're going to we're going to do extensive testing and try to like okay, if we want to invent like a microchip that lets us talk to each other, you know, not not psychically, but through the technology implanted in our heads, which people are working on actively right now. If you bring up that idea, people are immediately like, oh no, I don't want something in my head. Like oh, imagine all the things that could go wrong, and like that's entirely true, which is why we will before like making that technology available do extensive testing right. and, and try to avoid the very things that people are afraid of. Well, here's so the thing. When I, this yeah, is what I ahead. think. I think the problem is that we're all influenced by popular culture and technology is the current boogeyman that we all like to think is going to go bad. Like that's been the boogeyman right. for what, the last like 20, 30 years. Yeah. You know, like even dumb. you go that and it's like, oh, Terminator 2, Skynet, all that shit's going to happen. And I just think back to like before that, you know, like like electricity was the boogeyman. It's like, oh, you got shocked by electricity <laughs> and turned into a monster because we don't understand how this works. So yeah, like, reflecting... but now it's just like electricity, no thing. Like that's yeah, gonna having... be. <laughs> uh, 
so much art and like fiction has a hard time like grappling with the fear but still great potential of future technology you know so much sci-fi stuff even if part of the appeal of say a sci-fi movie is about like showing off this cool technology the script just cannot help but constantly preoccupy itself with all the fucking things that can go wrong and scarcely showing you why people mm -hmm. adopted the technology in the first place and again Ghost in the Shell standalone complex the series specifically does a great job just really it, it's not it is even handed it talks about cyber brain sclerosis which is like a disease that no one can figure out caused by a cyber brain you're fucked right but it's still but again the oh, real villain yeah. just in that situation is the fact that the corporation invented a cure for it but didn't want to implement it because it would because it would impact their bottom line too much again just setting up a situation where technology isn't what's evil it's it's the greed of men that's the real evil here I'm, so I'll, like th yeah. that's exactly what i want to see in a story like that yeah. you know? right like and like uh, like actually i'm actually watching an episode right now like earlier today i also mm. heard an explanation mm. that was like well they couldn't figure out why the cure worked so it wasn't approved for that reason i don't know anyway like i even recently sure. watched the ghost and shell movie you know the 1995 one and even that portrays the whole cyberization thing with a little bit more tension and like fear because there's like a scene Absolutely. where matoko and bato are sitting on a boat just like reflecting on how like they they sure they feel really ambivalent uh, really mixed about their robot bodies they're like oh man we're like so strong and everything but like we can't swim in water <laughs> without sinking mm. and i'm like dude what the fuck <laughs> like <laughs> i guess i guess it might feel uncomfortable you might constantly feel weird about yourself but matoko in the uh, in the series just seems to have not really any serious issue you know she has trauma over the accident yeah. that required the exactly robot body right. but in in general it's like dude this is fucking awesome and like that's the attitude i have for technology it's like oh the internet oh yeah you know early on it caused lots of creepy killers to run around i mean that's still a thing it has all those sorts of weird consequences of anonymity fake news and all that shit but you look at what mm -hmm. came before mm -hmm. all news was fake news before the internet because you had no way of knowing what the fuck was going on in the world they don't know obama so that's why the internet's ultimately the most <laughs> like <laughs> incredible <laughs> for society and same way cyberization yeah it'll have problems and people who do not fucking respect the difference in quality of life from before that invention came around will continuously naysay it the same way that like so much like i think fantasy fiction looks back on like the 1600s and like oh no giant corporations yeah, yeah. no fucking uh worrying about bills yeah and fucking every plague that could kill you any single week with no soap to help you no one makes fantasy <laughs> right. stories with that shit I think right, I think the these things kind of go in cycles as they kind of like permeate popular culture. I think at first it's like awe and wonder and mystique, then it goes to fear and then it just becomes acceptance. And like a great example of this I think is Star Trek because I think the original mm -hmm. series of Star Trek was like, man, technology is so crazy and it's amazing. And imagine all these things we could do with it. We could travel to stars and solve all the problems. We can heal people instantly. And, and but but by next generation <laughs> it's like, oh no, we have the Borg and like how technology can be used evilly and then like deep space nine had a lot of undertones of like technology being bad too and i think the, now it's just kind of like a technology is just like a backdrop like you know you look at the star trek films and stuff and there's mm -hmm. no statement on it at all it's just there yeah. and it's a part of it and like i mean they use there's it for plot devices and it's stuff. it's interesting it's interesting the emphasis that gets played on stories like that because like yeah it, like in 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 jj abrams uh star trek like there's basically no psycho phil philosophical discussions beyond like the big like why is the big bad guy doing this oh no we blew up his planet he's getting vengeance like something like that which is just you know bog standard like action uh story shit yeah um whereas like ghost in the shell uh, so, so like the the 1995 movie that's the most famous is, I don't know if I want to say this. Okay, it it is sort of in tone at least my least favorite interpretation of like the Ghost in the Shell series, entirely because it has by far the most negative tone yeah. on like the technology in general. It it is a very dour like emphasis. Whereas what I love about every single other iteration, including Arise to some extent, is that. Those ones, like like Star Trek, l l like actually the J.J. Abrams Star Trek, they sort of just fully embrace the, the, the change. And they show, okay, this is just a world where, like, cyborgs live among us, and it's, it's just normal. There's nothing weird about this. And that is, honestly, that is fucking progressive. That is super progressive is. in a way that I absolutely love. That it's just like, yeah, like, okay, so, uh, I don't like, I don't know, uh, I hate all Muslims. I hate all black people. I hate Jews, whatever. Uh, but <laughs> I accept people who have Sound fucking, bite. like, gigantic, <laughs> like, I, I, like, but... <laughs> what I... <laughs> Uh, that's that's not me. That, this is me quoting a fictional character. You, oh, okay. <laughs> what I'm saying, but uh, it's just like so. If you if you hate like races, but you like like 
uh, someone with a robotic fucking body or like full of cybernetic like augmentations. Like on the progressive scale, that's you, on the progressive scale. That's be, you being like way, way more accepting of someone different from you. You know, so uh, I, I don't know where I'm going with that. But uh, yeah, I There's hate minorities. That's what I'm trying to say. Be, sure. I guess yeah. the, the slogan you're going for is uh, get nano machines, become a Nazi. Mm-hmm. Net progressive. <laughs> I want to say about um, the 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 presentation of technology is scary. I think mm. a lot of it just comes from like needing drama in a story. Yeah. Of like, if we're gonna make a story about sci-fi and the whole point is the technology, then the question becomes, well, how do we create tension? Well, what could go wrong with the technology? And it's kind of unfortunate. And I also think that people focus so much on the downsides of something like for instance the Mm -hmm. self-driving cars which are now a thing that's just out there there's people Mm -hmm. just on the road with self-driving cars and of course the second there was a fatality in one of them um because of the car's failure it was like a huge uproar and it's like on the one hand yes it is still scary that they are not perfect however you will probably die in an auto accident driving your own car anyways Wait, like, you pro- you're talking like a near a hundred percent chance. Of I mean, everyone? you could just. Th- did you know that there that th- that the odds of you getting into an ax an auto accident is that mm-hmm. you will get in one once every fifteen years? Well, <laughs> that is how the, it's not. You have a one in whatever chance. It's you will be involved in an auto accident at least once every fifteen years. <laughs> I um, like no matter odds. how. Serious. So when you have when you have one accident with self driving cars, it's like what are we bitching about again? You know, it's once yeah. it's become uh, so the, normalized. You know, that's that's the whole thing of people like being afraid people are afraid whenever they put their like their power in the hands Indeed, of something yeah. else even right. if it is like statistically more reliable because like, reason why like planes oh, are scary. maybe there's a exactly uh, yeah it, it kind of adds in a degree of people's people's like imaginations can run wild when they don't actually understand what's happening so like there's all this room to conspirathize about like oh like let's say like uh, uh i don't know like uh, uh, an asian guy gets in an accident it's like oh my god the self-driving company like car companies are trying to wipe out asian americans and purify the white race Nate, in our nation that? holy you shit ago, you said conspirathize is that like some sort of porno about who did 9-11 like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Alex Jones x uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. It's good shit. Dude. Yeah, um, I don't. Yeah, I don't. people. That's just an instinct. There, there's a major instinct that people have to be scared of this stuff. And honestly, I am too. I definitely. I think it's just a human thing. And I would really like to transhumanize that away. I would love to <laughs> cut that part out. I was about out, to say right? the, the solution would be just to somehow augment our brains to get rid of yep. this primitive limitation that no longer applies. Man, mm-hmm. if only there was some topic we could what talk about. Think? It was all about that. <laughs> what would you think about like, like that being implemented as like, oh, a uh, special gas that makes everyone like uh, technology oh, and never question it, and that you just okay, you, know you send that gas out, and then people are like initially they're like, oh no, I'm being gassed, and then they're like, wait, this was a good idea. That is a very interesting question, and there is a Futurama issue that deals with that, a Futurama episode. Remember that episode where they get a new <laughs> robot in the office, and Bender, like, hates it, so he gets a compatibility upgrade? And what that manifests as oh, is yeah. it's one of the most interesting episodes. It manifests as Bender, like, goes to the place to get the upgrade. Uh, he then seemingly chickens out and runs away, runs to an island where he, like, rejects technology, becomes, like, a wood robot instead of fucking uh, uh, metal. E- eventually, like, he comes back to land to lead an uprising, and in the uprising, like, he gets hurt and is going to die, except he's saved by the new robot and is like, I love the new robot now, only to then wake up for the dream that this all was uh-huh. in the upgrade center. And it was revealed that, yeah, like, this this is what the upgrade was for him, which, incidentally, is how I think about the way that I became compatible with making fast YouTube content. I went through this whole rigmarole just to end up at the very beginning where it was like, yeah, make daily content, make fast content. That's uh, that's what you got to do. Uh, I, so, guess you know, a, I, I guess that's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Thing. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it wasn't an illusion. It was just real life. <laughs> that's uh, that's the difference. It do, doesn't matter. The point is, like, that is a very interesting thing. And if we could put it in those terms, if we could do things like that, um, I like it. I think yeah, it's Yeah, I have cool, a handful of different... you could explore. Because, you know, Digi talked about mm-hmm. the whole uh, need for drama. But it's also need for drama plus lazy creativity, not being creative enough and coming up with something that can go wrong without undercutting the Mm -hmm. entire value of having that innovation in the first place, right? So, like, 
For example, something with like, uh, like say, post scarcity society where we can simulate anything at any point forever. I had the idea of like mm -hmm. a we like basically all of humanity gets together to make some computers that will make more computers that will keep making more computers until they make one that is absolutely intelligent, morally flawless, and will never betray humanity. Right. So they make one, and then they start expanding yep. and, and colonizing the galaxy or whatever. So it's like tens of thousands of years go by, and most humans don't even know about this because this post scarcity society is terrifying to most people. So like you can learn. Mm -hmm about it mm -hmm. if you if you if you find out about it and then like if you end up really depressed about that they'll just erase your memories and put you back in some other simulation right so people are put in countless okay. simulations where scarcity is artificialized but everyone ultimately is happy everyone's given a life where they are given the illusion that they could fail and end up succeeding right maybe even with lots of simulated humans uh like fake humans are all who are all like dying africans to mm -hmm. make you value mm -hmm. your own self right and so then the story is that sure. this uh ai that's like colonizing a pretty decent chunk of the milky way at this point finds some other some other fucking force that's like incredibly powerful it's some other life form that's beyond anything that we can conceive and so the robot needs to figure out like how to beat it and starts running specific uh test driven tests on humans to figure out like their behavior and learn things from them and maybe there's like one main human character in the story who talks to the AI directly who you are literally pitching a full sci-fi novel right now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so basically <laughs> the robot has because like maybe the robot can't a hundred percent simulate everything that the human soul is able to come up with and there's just things about this abstract entity out in out in space that he can't understand so he has to like investigate the human animal and like try to <laughs> and he, oh he spends thousands of years hundreds of generations evolving certain people to find an outlier who can represent the same weird trait that this galactic force has and that's the main character someone with like this trait that no one could ever possibly have without specific breeding and I don't know that's the fucking beginning of the story okay kind of sounds like Neo he was like kind of born with yeah. this awareness of the world he was in yeah, that, that, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. my, that's my cool. version of Neo he doesn't even just see the world in like zeros and ones he sees the world in zero one two and threes like he sees like all the fucking numbers <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, and, oh, sorry, go on, Tom. You can go ahead. Oh, that was me. I was going oh, uh, okay. to say, to, to get to give us some structure here and to get <laughs> Hippo talking as well, I'm curious about what transhuman thing each of you wants the most. Like, what what do you want? Like a realistic one within our lifetime? Yeah, like, what if, if mm -hmm. like, what do you hope, let's say they can roll it out in the next, let's say that we are in the technological singularity, so this stuff's getting mm. rolled out really fast, you know? Like, what what's the one you want to come next? Uh, Hippo, do you have any, like, any things you would want to transhumanize, mm. like, right now? Well, it's it's always weird for me because I'm not constantly thinking of everything that I do as a human being being like mm -hmm. something I could get rid of or would want to get rid of because I don't know what it's like to not have it. So I guess st something that would just make my job easier, like the ability to write with your mind, like you would think yeah. words and then they would just type come up on the it's page. It's called an ergonomic that keyboard. So that would be so perfect for me when I'm fucking high because I can't write anything but I have a thousand ideas. Um, yeah, uh, to, actually, to, to, make, to make them come out of your head and also to, to organize them in a way that's readable afterwards. Yeah, yeah, that'd that would be, awesome. be pretty cool. Right, that's important. I mm -hmm. wanna, I'll go into mine just so I can sort of lay the, like, let, let you guys yeah, sure. know more of what I mean. Um, though that was a good one. Um, what I want out of transhumanism is uh, basically autopilot. Like, because I like setting, th I, I love auto pay, for instance, like having my bills set to just automatic payments every month, having mm -hmm. everything just work automatically so I don't have to think about it. And I would like it if some like, like my personal upkeep could just be automatic. Like, I don't have to worry about, for instance, brushing my teeth. I've just got nanobots that do uh. that. Or my teeth are just not something that has to be taken care of. Or like, you know my hair and beard are just set at a length and like I don't I don't have to do anything basically I can just do my job and not worry about like constantly falling behind on personal upkeep because I'm too distracted by everything else that's what I want you know, like first you know on on that front you know how that when when you're in a coma they actually they sort of exercise your body for you they like yeah. stretch your muscles and they move you so you don't get like bed sores as well as like keep you alive and able to function once you come back like the exercising takes a lot of fucking time and a lot of concentration and focus to yeah. do it right. But yeah, man, I, I'm totally with you. If and I all just, I want like, out of it is to that, be healthy. Like, right. I mean, I know you can. There is a lot to be learned from working out. 
like about self discipline and there's a lot of Mm -hmm. good things that Mm -hmm. come from it but like when you're in a position like i am where your life's pretty figured out and it's not that i lack the discipline per se so much as like i want to do other things and i it takes up a lot of fucking time and energy you know Mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. doesn't always leave you in the in a state where you can then perform sitting in a chair for the next eight hours well that's an interesting uh, thing about (coughs) hippo you go okay well it's an interesting thing about that because like if if things are just uh, like easy for everyone to do um the, the, the you know the thing like having a perfect physique or or whatever, it stops being special and then everyone can have it. And also, like, the discipline thing. If, if, if all these, like, transhumanist things are, like... Like, should they be expensive? Should they be, like, this some sort of, like, you have to be a certain age or you have to prove that you're worth all this stuff? Or is it just giving it to I, everyone? Like, what, what what's the moral thing? I would to give it to thing? everyone. I, I think, uh... I don't know. It's interesting to to uh, the idea of like we'd all end up the same or it would stop being special because that just means that the only people who are going to do it are people who want it for like real re- like I mean everyone should be healthy because that's just better for everybody. Yeah, it's not you a know? hard yeah. decision, but still most people don't that make it. That wasn't really my point. I was just saying it, but like like yeah. I don't know. I I, f- I feel like some people they don't they don't all deserve all the like benefits of, of mm. technology is like I don't know I, I, I feel like it's some sort of a, a barrier to get I, into that I think it'll make people better though like like people who well another thing I would really want is some kind of mm-hmm. um you know we need ways to like control our minds better I think like it would be nice if we had a transhumanist way to I don't know alleviate insanity like yeah, I, ju- right, I just feel like. Right. There is a risk if, like, everybody becomes the same person or something, but, like, I feel like as we approach... It would just be a change in, like, what we value. <laughs> like, I mean, there was once a time where everybody was healthy, you know, like, because you had to be or else you fucking died. So, like, well, okay, maybe not... Maybe oh, healthy is like, not the yeah, one. Like, I, fit yeah. or something. Everyone yeah, had there was to a be time fit, where, okay. and then died where there wasn't fat slobs everywhere, you know? Right, true, but, like, very true. And it didn't, it didn't mean that... Um, everybody has to do the same thing it just means you can change your focus elsewhere like a guy who like there's some people who are way into fitness and that's their whole identity but if fitness Mm -hmm. was just something taken care of they would probably just do something else you know like that just wouldn't it just wouldn't be something that is somebody's identity in this future but something else might be something uh, that we didn't know we had time for my answer to your whole question about (laughs) about what you would uh what you would do what i would do what i would want the most out of like a quick rollout of transhumanism would be another way to do the same thing essentially which is also an expansion of what Hippo said, which is just have a, a computer screen I can see and control mentally. Uh, then I would never, I could just go for a walk all day and get see, all my work done. That my, would be the tits. I, I, I love the, that idea, but for me, like in all sci fi stories, that is the thing I least can believe is like controlling things with your mind because your mind doesn't work that straightforwardly, you know? Like at least my thoughts, they don't occur in like a narrative way. It's not like well, uh, it's I, I, it's not I impossible like... to control because like I've seen disabled people mm-hmm. with like robotic arms that are controlled with like wires into That's their true. brain. I feel like if we have the ability to control our like our bodies to the level of precision that we do, like just if you move all your fingers at once, like I'm doing right now, like that's a lot of precise control that I have. I feel like it is possible. It, it might actually take a lot of effort to do, like as a I'm, person. I'm thinking, just wondering, but... like if it, let's say mm-hmm. I'm typing with my mind, is mm-hmm. it going to only type the things that I want to be typed, or is it going to type every fucking word that's in my head, of which there are question. thousands? Well, did you, you know, the like, assumption is is that you'll get a little extra, mm-hmm. little chip, a little tiny bit of little brain matter that will take care of all that. Just like, yeah, just the same computer I, codes can this, now be thought. The way I would assume it would work, uh, well, or that I imagine, is that you're not like thinking a word like in your head the way you would think a word now you're imagining or controlling a pretend arm typing on a pretend keyboard right because mm-hmm. when you're th- when you're typing you're still thinking of the end words you want to type so this is just taking those motor actions and translating them into the the head screen itself so you're just you're typing you're using that same thought process of like okay now i'm going to type this sentence after i've thought about what it's going to be and instead of ch- changing that into a physical motor action you're just directly mm-hmm. putting it onto whatever this display is. 
Yeah. But hey, ultimately we are talking about fiction, so like I, I'm prepared to say like yeah, we, we could figure that out. So I right. that that seems fair to do. Oh, did you want to add anything else, or can I go? Uh, no, that was it. Okay, um, I mine is a little bit further out and possibly not even real or or uh, could be done. But what I what I want the most is I want the ability to detach consciousness from the physical body. And that could mean either to, like, physically body swapping so that I can be a big slut and fuck dudes. Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> <Hell> yeah. um, <laughs> or, uh, like, the ability to, to sort of uh, – uh, and th- this is, like, next-level shit, but, like, uploading your consciousness to, to the cloud, to the internet. Real quick. And I don't if, know what that's if like. All of but... a, if you could have a, uh, an android body, if we could swap our brain into someone else's body, would anyone <laughs> in here remain male? Because I know uh, I would not. Well, not all the Lo- time. Certainly not. No. Long term, I would want to remain male. I mean, I okay. do like being a guy. I, I would reevaluate what it even means to be male in a world with that, where that is the case. And right. so would uh, everyone. But I'm, I'm pretty happy being male be, right now. I would probably be both. I don't see any reason options. why not I to like be both. Options. Like, Although, at the same time, I mean, it like, might a body be that, just both. It might I think be everyone that in the future you... will just have a dick and tits, and it'll be great. I, I, I wonder if after you do the other one, if you'll be like, actually, it's... It's not all it's cracked up to be. Like once you've been it, will it just change your perception of That's it entirely? True. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's going to be it'll different. It'll end sure sexism. It's, it's great. <laughs> it'll, I'm sure it'll have an effect. You know, though, uh, what this does make me think of a lot is the. Uh, I, Gib brought this up a little bit. Like, if, if this stuff gets implemented to some degree, imagine the incredible gap that will develop between people who have this shit and people who don't. I think like, that's probably the Jesus most terrifying Christ. part. And, I, and there yeah. are times when I'm always wondering, like. Do the super elite already have transhumanist benefits that we just don't even know about? <laughs> Maybe, man. Oh, man. Maybe. See, I'm not afraid of that because I'll be in the transhuman camp and I'll have a rocket launcher in my arm. And so if, <laughs> if all the if all the <laughs> proletariat are like, we're going to overthrow you because you fucking pieces of shit, I'll just be like, uh, and kill all the poor people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classes on oh. boys. I... I... <laughs> I, I think, I think in order to be in that camp, you need more than 350,000 subscribers. I think, I think the wealth gap <laughs> is a little true. bit bigger yeah. than that. Yeah, that's, that's oh, more oh, of a PewDiePie is going to be the only thing. robot YouTuber. <laughs> exactly. He's the only one who can afford it. Hmm. He's going to go around assassinating uh, <clears throat> the Commenters, media. shitty commenters. Yeah, in the media. <laughs> He's going to upload a video where he gets some people are in like a third world country PewDiePie. uploading death to all flesh bags. <laughs> He's going to gasp. Like, how could they say that? Indeed. I, think... I look forward to the racial slurs that develop for transhumanists. It's going to be oh, fun. Oh, God. We, we're really talking about the boringest parts of future novels. Like, <laughs> oh, the disparity. Oh, the weird, weird words we come up with. Yeah, okay. Skip this chapter. What do you mean? Well, uh, yeah, but, like, the whole, like, poor thing. Like, I assume if we have, like, all this super technology, we'd get to a point, like, uh, where there's no reason we couldn't give it to everyone. But then... My problem would be if who we're would still use it under properly. That model, yeah, like to just trickle I, if, down. If capitalism is still real, the, like why would we give it to them? And it's possible that like they will, they, like nothing that someone who doesn't have these abilities guess... could could ever do could like get them to a place oh, where this... they can like. I'm just wondering at this. that point if we get to the point where you can literally you know have mm-hmm. a, a cybernetic body, we, yeah. we get technology to that degree. Like, would we even have problems with like? means of production at that point like i can't yeah. even see that's, capitalism that's even being those a problem are separate. By that those point. are separate issues there's I a, think those are discreet. this is addressed in an interesting way in a show that uh the first half of which is amazing and the second half is a dumpster fire called kado mm-hmm. um where an alien life form shows up on earth and he's trying to advance humanity as fast as possible basically mm-hmm. and so he comes bearing gifts and the first gift he gives them is these little orbs that have infinite energy and Siam. he's like He's like, I want everyone in the world to have this, but like the government and um, uh, what's it called? The uh, United Nations are like, we want to have control over it and have sanctions. Um, So basically he teaches people how to just make them, like how to make these balls so everyone can have it. And he was like, what these people don't understand, like what the government's not understanding is they're worried about like this being an arms race or a power struggle. But the fact is, Mm -hmm. if everyone has it there's no need to fight over it like yeah. everyone well, can uh, have you know, this you th- know. Th- that's true and all but it is possible like if everyone had nukes right now it's possible like north korea if they had overwhelming power would just destroy everyone else uh so th- that is a real concern to have so I'm, right. I'm i'm with the un right now but okay go on 
Um, no, that was it. That's all I well, had to say. Oh, that's I, the whole, I can, can kind of relate that okay. to uh, that show. Goes right. Down, it doesn't. It does not continue to explore this amazingly interesting situation Aww. it's created. It uh, <laughs> instead turns into a terrible action but, show. But dude, and, uh, that's but like, too like yeah, bad. you know, Complete talking about that in regards to say like uh, uh, scarcity, right? For example, we're entering a situation where more and more shit is automated, and people are concerned about you know um, humans having jobs. The thing is, every time mm-hmm. a robot replaces a job, it makes living on the earth earth a little bit cheaper like imagine we just have robots for like everything we have robots that construct a house and like refurbish it and also the robots deliver the pieces of that house to the building site and also robots uh mine and cut down the resources from planet earth to make those parts so if everything is done through robots and let's say even the administration of the business is done through robots then the only thing you're having to pay for is the energy spent operating the robots, which the robots could themselves be mining for, making even the obtainment of energy resources really cheap. Meaning, in a society mm-hmm. where everything's done by robots, basically, there's not necessarily much need for money, if we just skip straight to the far future. But the problem is that uh, moving into that progress is sort of blocked or clogged up by right. like laws and social standards that are in place to keep people from getting gypped out of work or finances, stuff like mm-hmm. the minimum mm-hmm. wage. Like, for all it does to help people not get fucked over, it also kind of fucks over progress in a lot of ways. And, uh, yeah, you know? You're not wrong. It's a complex thing. Yeah, transitioning to that will... It, our, everything about the way the, our system, at least in America right now, is adapted for the current situation we found ourselves in. Well, I, I guess you could actually argue it's adapted for one, like, 50 years ago that we're still trying to catch up to right now with, but uh, <laughs> probably even before that. But nonetheless, like, you're, you're entirely right. This Getting to these positions is going to be a very difficult struggle and a very, uh, right. you know... Because you're going to have this transition thing. period where people are displaced. That's right. Guys, That's what right. if... What if what if Rick and Morty was real? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Rick's got a robot body sometimes. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That'd be cool. Android dong. Tom, Nate, you haven't up? answered this yet, have you? I have not answered it yet. Right, yes. right. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess mine's just really fucking petty compared to everybody else's. The one thing I'd want is to just, like, I've always been disgusted and ashamed in the fact that <laughs> our our flesh and blood bodies are so fragile yeah. Like, it's just like, okay. oh, like, you okay. have, like, one heart, and if it something happens to it, Evolve. you're fucked. Ooh. Like, we can yeah. kind of hopefully stitch something in there, but you gotta wait around, and it's not a good chance. Like, like it just blows my mind that we can't just swap it out. So, like, if we're gonna do transhumanism, what I think the first thing that should happen is either um, nanomachines that can enhance and repair organs, so bodies don't die and don't break Literally down Literally, the Metal Gear Rising... Uh, Nano machine, that. son. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. That's right. That's. I mean, it just that just seems like the most logical thing because, like, I long term, I would like to have a fully synthetic body, not necessarily like something out of like Deus Ex: Human Revolution, where they just literally s- attach yeah, metal arms yeah. onto me after <laughs> sawing off my normal ones. Because, like, Deus Ex is a great example of like why that doesn't really work. Because, like, in the world of Deus Ex, um, in the original game, they have nano machines like that's the current technology so like the main character mm. jc denton he walks around he looks pretty much like a regular guy but his entire body is augmented wow. with nanotechnology I've only played the first one they the whole point of deus ex one is that it's like oh man you've seen robot guys but this is a guy whose robots are so small he looks like a normal guy but then you're telling me uh. the later deus ex games from the following century regressed on that idea come well, on because it's 2013 prequels. people the, yeah the, oh, the, the, the other prequels. games are prequels to the first one yeah, they 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 um they take place I think twenty years beforehand. Hmm. So maybe maybe a prequel to a futuristic uh, story is a dumb idea. Just JK. I thought it was actually really interesting. I think it worked very because like the 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 idea in like the original Deus Ex is obviously it's talking about cy- uh, augmentation and stuff in general, but it also has this interesting idea of like we have all these clunky big robot dudes walking around that like at the time that was like the shit and what you were supposed to do, but now like you can't. They can't get the nano machines in the way that normal people being born now can because they already hacked oh, off the regular limbs. So there's shit. this this dichotomy of like now they're second class citizens where before they weren't because they can never take advantage of this new technology the way that people now can. And then in Deus Ex Human Revolution, it's talking about the impact on current society of having augmentations becoming something in the beginning. You can already see mm-hmm, in those games mm-hmm. the foreshadowing of like the nano technology coming because obviously the series has that in its lore already so it's two different kind of conflicts but that's like i just 
it just seems to me the Deus Ex original game, that's kind of like the robot body I'd want, or like the cyber brain yeah. robot mm-hmm. body out of uh, um, Ghost, in, Ghost the in the Shell. That just makes more sense because right, I think right. um, it's just it's more advanced in general. Like, I wouldn't want to have this big, giant, fucking hulking yeah. arm because, like, the main character in uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, his tech looks really, like, slick and nice and shit, but that's because, like, it's the most expensive fucking crazy shit they could buy. Uh, normal people walking around that you talk to look like fucking Gundams, and not yeah. in a good way. <laughs> that sounds kind of dope, uh, but, but, you know, once we get once we get really deep into this shit, like, uh, like remember in, in Ghost in the Shell how there was, like, the president of one of the companies is just, like, a, a dude in a fucking, fucking box with, like, awesome. tiny little... Like, that, okay, that's, well, like, the coolest thing ever, dude, but... but I, like, yeah, I wanted ahead, to talk. I wanted to talk about this because you said like eventually you want to disconnect consciousness from physical bodies, and this is something right, I think about right. a lot because I love transhumanism as a concept. But the thing that I always wonder is like, what's the end game? We're going to keep pushing this forward and forward mm-hmm, and forward, mm-hmm. and the end game seems to inevitably be to abandon physical reality entirely. In my opinion, I think that sort of. Or, some, or make the form that you that you sort of host in like, like it could be anything. My my mm-hmm. my thing is like what if you just existed digitally? Like what if you you just there was no mm-hmm. like we the physical because like no matter how much we like augment ourselves with like human like like humanoid cybernetic bodies or whatever, even just like non human cybernetic bodies, we're still limited by being physical of having mass of taking up space and so like if you lived completely digitally like think about it this way when you're on the internet and you go to a website you don't have to travel from google physically to the next website you just go there what if Mm -hmm. like that's how travel in general works like if you were just digital like first of all there'd be no need for construction because everything could be made instantaneously because it's digital so there's no worrying about resources resources are finite or infinite not finite anymore you're not dealing with finite resources like oh mm-hmm. someone needs a house just drop in the house.exe and it just builds it yeah, so like but, there's right. nothing to deal Here's with that the thing. the thing with all that and this is this is like the the line i draw because digital uh, in, in enhancing your body so that you can do things in the you know in the real world way better um, you know, getting rid of the the need to sleep and, and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. That's fine. But when you start talking about living entirely as digital beings, I'm like, well, a digital being doesn't need a house. He doesn't need yeah. well, that's, that's anything. Well, that's exactly where I was He may as go. well have just killed himself. Well, no, no. That My, my point mm, is that like, when, we get, when we get to this point of being like. a physical, of, of being, of abandoning physical reality entirely, if we get to that point, well, you have to actually wonder like can our brains even cope with that because yeah, if you're if you're not a physical being anymore and right. let's why would you get in your car and drive to work oh, yeah, why absolutely. would you even have um, a concept of like buildings <clears throat> and roads would anything, it's, it's, you would just it, you would just be like energy basically a consciousness that exists and like could the the human brain which is kind of obviously evolved to deal with the limitations of physical reality adapt itself right. to a reality where i can't That's i can't why... even comprehend it of of mm-hmm. being just like thoughts and math or like thoughts and consciousness that kind of just can sift and move around somehow and interact with other things like i don't even know how it work it's beyond clearly that's, my comprehension that's why i'm gonna actually lay down an actual like solid like a die in the wool or line in the sand prediction right you see people in the past be like oh yes eventually computers may only be the size of two refrigerators by the year 2000 you know mm-hmm. but then some people who hit it right on the fucking money you know like oh man this whole internet thing i think it's gonna bring us all together and yet also isolate us and create weird anonymous people right some people are right on the money so i'm gonna i'm gonna take my chance right my prediction as i sort of alluded to a bit earlier is that when we enter post scarcity be it because we all become digital concepts or because we have 3d printers and intergalactic travel and and we have like nano machines that protect our mm-hmm. bodies forever one way or another once we enter actual true post scarcity it's only a matter of watching those rpgs uh, uh rts stat bars on the galaxy <laughs> go up waiting for that oh, re- resources to be mined from our solar system and other stars when we get to that point my prediction is that people will have a mass exodus from actual awareness of of lucidity right of everyone will just go into simulations right be it actually constructing a simulation and like living in it or just bu- building a program you know like like 1950s american housewife.exe boom you now think that's you yeah. your memories are totally altered and like once that simulation of you version dies and you become conscious again you're like oh okay so now i'm going to do this or that we just come up with all sorts of weird fucking lives for us to have and you know and we just exist like that forever and ever and ever and that's basically it. I think that basically yeah. worked. My 
My I just concern, feel like, what's the point? Like, yeah. why would why would any of that ever exist for well, anyone? My concern is that, like, if you upload yourself to the cloud, <laughs> then there is there just is no more you. You are just part of the cloud. It's just well, the cloud is just everybody. It's just a collective the, conscious. Because like, you have all the information there is. You know, like if you are a part of the information, then like basically you know what everyone else is thinking because it's all in the cloud. You know, like you've basically, you're just a part of the the there overall. There could be partitions if you want there to be. It's there, not there, like you have I mean, to. There would there, there would have to be, be heavy the, partitions for it to if, to mean anything to a human. I think the, going the, into the divisions it. between individuality sure, sure. wouldn't be the access to information; it'd be the interpretation of it. Because that's how information works mm -hmm. right now. You can give two people the same information; they can extrapolate completely different results. Well, okay, you know, that's we talked true. about like computer brains, right? So human brains right now is a computer that is always running, right? Is all even in a coma, it's always constantly going through its program loop, right? And whereas, you know, a hard drive or a program on a floppy disk or whatever can just be inert, right? All the data is there, but it's not moving. So you could program the, something on a floppy disk to be like, oh man, when I'm running, I'm, I want to eat food, food.exe. Where the fuck can I get my food, right? But if it's just the floppy disk not being run, it's inert data, not moving, it's not alive, right? So presumably if you want an accurate, if we're, if we're already assuming that we're having accurate representations of the human brain, one prerequisite is that we're already running, right? We're not just data on a floppy disk, because then we're dead until someone boots us back up, right? So if we are running, then presumably, if it's an accurate representation of the human mind, there is going to be a, hey, I need uh, more of my fucking food value. Can I please get my food variable, please? Can I please get my human comfort variable? I need it, right? So for me, it's, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of like a really obtuse uh, here's, hair display. Here's my ex... Let me give you my expectation of uh, my final form of transhumanism that I imagine. An because, even longer uh, again, beard. The the despair, <laughs> the disparity will be pretty massive. Because even right now, like think about the information disparity between someone who like not only has a smartphone but uses it all day to use the internet yeah, to access yeah. all the worldly information and like someone in like a tribal society in Africa or something like the mm -hmm, information mm -hmm. disparity is unbelievable. I just massive. imagine people the in that, that tribe yeah well I imagine that people in some tribes out in the world like literally have no concept of what the world is at this point you yeah. know like there's no way to bridge the information gap that's got the, uh, at that scale. So I'm imagining that, yes, there will be a way to have a partitioned mind in a machine. The people with the partitioned minds, they're going to be the uh, Babylon. Like, it's just people fucking around. Like, like people just... G my mind's in a computer and I can do anything now, you know? Like, my life's gonna be nothing but fucking sluts all day. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's the partitioned minds. Then you have the people who join the collective cloud conscience who all mind meld into one being, and they're the ones who, within, like, a year, solve how to get off the planet, and they fuck off. And they're like, look, humans, y'all got a choice. You can either mind meld with us and get the fuck off this planet, or... You, you guys can hang out here until the planet explodes. And we're all like, you know what? Giving up my individuality scares me too much, so I'm not joining the cloud I mean, conscience. I guess. I mean, yeah. I don't... Digi, it's very, it's very interesting, Digi, that you refer, that you use the word Babylon there. Because I yeah. think that is a very accurate word to use. Because, uh, you know, Tower of Babylon and all that. And what this this whole discussion, what we're, what we're kind of, with our ape-like understanding and, our, and our, 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 you know, crude human matter brushing up against at the top of this, is like, where does, what, what lies above the consciousness that we now have what happens yeah. when we all meld ourselves into a greater collective that has no. all the processing power of the I entire hit. species and i like i that is entirely what the end of the of, you know of course the the most famous most successful ghost in the shell movie is all about because that's exactly what happens with the puppeteer the puppeteer yeah. you know access if find some way to access like to, to basically upload him, herself, itself, whatever, to, like, this network. And Motoko briefly, briefly experiences what that would be like. And in both the manga and the anime, or in the movie, rather, like, she basically sees the face of God for a second. It's, it's, I mean, it's portrayed in this angelic way. And I think that is a fascinating way to interpret it. Because I don't care about religion at all. I think it's bullshit and God doesn't exist. But 
I am happy to accept that what people think religion is and think God is could just be some higher level understanding that maybe maybe in history sometimes people have tapped into for brief moments. It's it's possible uh, in some weird way that uh, I don't understand. But I mean, the, the, the thing point is, of like, it is, I don't think that, uh, devote, devote, the, the point of it is, there is a higher level of consciousness than what we have. It might not be anything like what we think existence or consciousness is right now, but there is something above it. Maybe it's even just so much consciousness and processing power in a place that it makes like our like, like her basically exactly like her where everything we experience now is like incredibly slow motion and incredibly basic compared to what that that thing can process and to become a part of that is to completely lose what you were before and to become something just godlike yeah you know like in a, in a okay sense. so the, the whole thing mm -hmm. about like the collective right i'm gonna like really like like shit on the idea of a collective i guess ironically according to okay. the memes but like uh, fucking, what I understand about computer hardware, I don't know if anything, I, I don't know, like, I guess there might be some big old fucking matrix somewhere in some facility that people have been constructing, I guess, but, like, the, the actual internet is not like that at all, the actual internet is just a bunch of different mm -hmm. servers with a bunch of different fucking wires, you know, there was one time, not too long ago, where some fishermen just dropped a big fuck-off anchor, uh, down to the ocean, I happened to snap a particular uh, ocean line, and like some random South American nation was without internet for like a couple of days because they had to fix that. Right? There is no like central place where everything is. Everything is like F, uh, like uh, FTP or whatever. No, no, no. Fuck. It's, it's like it's like torrents, right? It's just one thing peer going. To peer, yeah, peer to peer. Yeah. Yeah. One thing going to another thing going to another thing. Right? You're entirely it's right. Just all You're organized. entirely right so it's about like, that. What exactly would be this mm -hmm. collective? I'm not saying you couldn't very easily construct he, he, something okay, for here's that, just, but like, here's what's just the like point a basic of that? Version, the, the basic version of what I'm sort of describing here is like, okay, what if you could just access the internet from your brain at any time? Like, that's right. like the first step. It would be like, okay, now I just like know everything. Now I just, I know everything. So this is, this is different now. I, I am a different person than what I was before I knew everything. And that's just like the first step. What if you could then communicate with everyone in real time instantly in addition to knowing everything, right. okay? It's that's essentially, again, oh, different. I see what you mean. Different. Because essentially, yeah. you already know everything on the internet if you count flipping out your phone and then reading it into your eyes as knowing it. Because essentially, right. your phone, with its access to the internet, is essentially a memory bank that just takes longer to up to, to, to get into your server than, mm -hmm. uh, than just having right. it in your brain directly would be. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting thing, how like the definition of, of memory works like that. Like, uh, I was actually thinking yeah. recently, like if someone did like a, uh, like a memory swap, thing where suddenly you have like let's say a memory addition right let's say you like invade someone's brain and you have all their memories and now you're in control of them right and i'm like would you just suddenly you wouldn't have like the sudden moment where you suddenly remember everything about their lives it's rather let's say you get up in their room right you look at your kitchen you're like oh hey i suddenly know where everything is you remember each thing as you need yeah. it so essentially being part of this because that's how memory would, works yeah you just yeah, you just true. be able to that's know true. it when you need to know it so you could very well still have a pretty big disparity of intelligence regarding like how well you can like like actually interpret all of that information right. so yeah okay that That's makes a sense. fucking interesting thought mm -hmm. um i it always is. imagine I, the cloud I... is like a beowulf cluster of brains like at the end of psychopaths oh you know? <laughs> yeah like sorry hippo. <laughs> i well i don't know it, it, it's usually just down to the question of are you willing <clears throat> to just go into this unknown thing because nobody can nobody in an ai digital mm -hmm. form will be able to accurately explain to you exactly what it feels like in right. the lifespan of a human That's they true. just can't do it so you have to just take a you know yeah. just jump in or just it's really not. interesting hippo because the stuff you're the way you're describing it is exactly what the first episode of serial experiments lane is about which is where a character kills herself so that she can be only exist in the cloud and she's basically like mass emailing people telling them like you should come here because it's it's the most liberating feeling like it, it changes what you are and basically lane ends up following her into the cloud b based on sheer curiosity about like what is it like to have that you know that's true that's, i mean you know, per personally i i when it comes to that question i i'm not convinced that it would be better but, I'd be terrified. Uh, but it might oh, change. Yeah. If I was, if, it if, it was like, if my better. life, mm -hmm. if my life was terrible and I was going to kill myself anyway, I would do it by jumping into a digital big old computer yeah. thing. Right. Sure. Oh yeah. That's like actually, I'd like to like bring the whole discussion over to that idea if we could. Is like let's think realistically, like forgetting your ideology and actually incorporating what level of fear or you know inertia you have, inhibitions you have in adopting potentially dangerous, untested technology. 
or not completely tested on the actual public, you know, we live in a fucking Note 7 society here, technology that, you know, could end up having unforeseen consequences, like, what would you actually do as a preventative measure, or, like, how quickly would you adopt it based on the information? I'll, I'll tell you, for me, like, I, even right now, even though I made the case for why it's safe earlier, I still would be uncomfortable driving a self-driving car. Indeed. The only way I'd be comfortable enough is if most people were doing it. Basically, I'm a fucking sheep, is what I'm saying. Like, I will probably never <laughs> be an early, early adopter. adopter. No, I'm not because I want it to be... I want it to already be perfect by the time I get there. <laughs> and Agreed. It's you know? a different thing to be an early adopter when, like, okay, there's a new phone out. Okay, I'm going to rush in and be the early adopter, as yeah. opposed to, like, my fucking car. Uh, you know, that's, like, it's, and, it's a different level of and stakes partly, here. partly it's because... I will. I won't learn everything about it. I want someone else to be. I want it to be something that like. Because let's say you you fuck up your smart car. How many people mm -hmm. can fix it? You know, like how many True. people understand what's wrong with it? Do you know what's wrong with it? You know, even people not. who know cars not. won't know what's mm -hmm. wrong with it. You'll have to go to Tesla. The to Google one of their stations. Corporation. Or, you know, yeah, if yeah. it's if it was everywhere, if it. Oh God! Imagine the Google you know. algorithm. To oh, Tom, you took fixed. the fucking algorithm oh, no. right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I, and even uh, with smartphones you know i didn't come in until the fucking note 3 was like my first smartphone like i because it wasn't prolific enough that i immediately understood it and it was only once everyone had one and i got what you could do it was basically the day i saw somebody playing super mario 64 on a phone that i went okay this technology has come too far for me to ignore it anymore you know right and then you so like on the bell super curve you're like you're the, the, you're the, terrible. the late majority slash laggard when it comes to I, things in I general i would say um i would say early majority of depending on what the technology is and what i think my use for it will be like for instance if we start having optic implants you know my eyes, I'm afraid about my eyes. Like, sometimes my eyes hurt for no reason, and I feel like it might be better if I had <laughs> sp special eyes, you know? Like, if, <laughs> right. if, if that technology, if the technology gets rolled out where, like, some people have augmented eyes, and then now there's an entire new field of film that you can only watch if oh, you have special no, eyes. Oh, no, you know there will and, be. And my favorite mm. animators are working in that film. Like, that's where I'm going to start getting mm. convinced. You know, you, you got to draw me in. You got to make me think that my life's going to be better than it is. Mm. And I'm, I'm fairly happy with my life. So, like, I don't need. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely you know, someone. I'm the same. I'm, I'm someone who's more, like, willing to take a chance. Like, if it intrigues yeah. me, I'd probably do it. I think the problem for me would be cost because I have no fucking money. But uh, right. in terms of willingness, yes. The, the, the interesting thing is, like, is there a line? This is a question I wanted to bring up to people because there definitely is for me. Is there a line that you won't cross? Is right. there some – if they – is there know. some sort of transhumanism that you'd it be like, really no, I'm not going on what, that far? What is my life right now? Because if, like Hippo said, if I'm depressed mm -hmm. and everything's going wrong, fuck it, throw me in the cloud. Absolutely. Like, if my life is miserable, especially, like, let's say I became, like, a vegetable or something. Oh, yeah, do, do anything to me. Like, <laughs> fucking get me out of here. Like, I don't need to be in this body anymore. But, like, if I'm as I am now where my individuality means a lot to me, it's difficult for me to imagine just giving that it's, up uh, for... It's, you know, it's, for the it's a well-documented thing that people don't change that much once they're past a certain age. So yeah. even if right now I began to see, like, the entire population of the Earth adapt to, let's just say, eye augmentations. Everyone's getting right. robot eyes. To then, to, to sell myself on the idea of going into the doctor, having him literally cut the eyeballs out of my fucking <laughs> skull to replace them with something else. I'm just saying, it would be a hard sell. Because yeah. I don't yeah. know anyone who's had their eyeballs cut and, out of their fucking and I'm skull. Only gonna I've do never it. seen it done. Like, like uh -huh. it's got to be, because it's going to be an ex incredibly expensive procedure. And if it's not mm -hmm. expensive, I don't want it because they're going to fuck <laughs> it up. Like, well, right. I want the best scientist <laughs> in the fucking world uh, augmenting my eyes. You right. know, it better well, not be some fucking quack doctor. Yeah, for me, it's Unless like, the technology is that easy to yeah. do. Yeah, oh, man, when you imagine, imagine when this technology is finally out, all the fucking my vision is augmented memes that would resurface. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, so for me, it would be memes, a whole new class yeah. of, of memes you could only See, understand yeah. with those eyes. Oh, just like, just like fucking... Uh, uh, what's that? What's that movie with they the live. obey and shit? They live. It'd be a whole yeah. they live memescape. There'd be Reddit posted everywhere. <laughs> Troll face. <laughs> fucking. So for me, oh, it's, you know, it's about day. weighing the different levels of risk and weighing the different levels of value. So like, you know, if uh, Indeed. if they got Indeed. nano machines that make you to where, hey, if you fall a fifty foot gap, you come off with a scratch, or you get hit by a car, you might have a broken bone, mm -hmm. right? 
and it's like, oh, there, there's like 10 reports of someone randomly dying from those nanomachines every year. I'm going to go for that, you know, because life is dangerous. You never know when you could fucking fall and die, right? So I think I'd go for that, assuming it's not too expensive. If there's something that's like a little, a little... Dude, you know that if, if nanomachines came into existence and like the, the death rate in the world dropped from like 100 million to like 10, people would be like, oh, fuck those nanomachines, man. They're killing people out there. They're yeah, fucking totally killing would. people. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's humans for you. That's humans for you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing, the thing that, the, the line that I wouldn't cross... For me mm -hmm. personally, and maybe as if time goes on and technology gets more advanced and our understanding improves, I could be swayed on this because I'm I'm willing to say that I could be swayed on anything really if Dick you present a good enough argument. I, I know what you're gonna say, Jew technology. I hear <sighs> you. You know, do. I cannot I cannot cross I, that. Gap. <laughs> you, you got me. <laughs> no, um, I is I would be more than willing to have my my body augmented as long as I knew it was safe. I would mm -hmm. have the willing to have my brain augmented if I knew it was safe. The one mm -hmm. thing I just don't, I don't think I would ever feel comfortable doing unless you gave Your me a dick. really solid argument would be, <laughs> would be um, to, to have like my, my consciousness copied onto a computer. Because uh, I think course. I think that, that the you're boundary. you're still alive in your brain, so like you can enhance that as much as you want. But as soon as you like kill my brain, like I'm dead. A con a copy of me is existing. So Tom, in the are cloud you saying whatever. are you uncomfortable with the idea of just like there's you and then they make a copy and then there's two of you, or this like you're transposed from here to there? I'm saying being the, transposed yeah. is still because right. I because I like, you will be dead. You will there, die. Yeah, there, there will is be a no new transposition. You. It's a copy paste and deleting the original file. The the only right. way I've been th I was thinking about this before the only way that i'm at all like comfortable with that is that uh, what's that ship the ship of theseus or whatever like that oh, model yeah. if we can if we can like plug in my brain to the computer and slowly piece by piece we move little bits of me over so that uh, after a while i'm like halfway on halfway off and then we keep doing that until now i'm all the way on the computer even then it's kind of like a hazy maybe you're that's still dead still me i think you're still I mean, dead right well, well the yeah. problem, i don't have an answer i mean this, I think that doesn't that really can, come into yeah. the the thing like it's Mm -hmm. it, you know, if you're you're just slowly you're, being copied. That's this all whole, it is. You're this killing. Whole, this you're whole killing. discussion it's is the same as teleportation. Right. Like, like you're you're killing yourself, and but you know you just, uh, as you understand, they, may you I remind, is going to be around. When it comes mm -hmm, to the teleportation still. argument, I always have to remind everyone that mm. at every seven years, there is no same atom in your body that was there seven years ago. Yeah, you are literally true. a wholly different person every seven it's year. It's the period. it's the it's the continuity that people yeah, right. value. That's exactly. what's matters, right. and, and that's that's and why I think the ship of the... Damocles, the ship of Theseus, the ship whatever of it is, that models, whatever it is, that sort of makes sense that to do it that way. As long as there's continuity, you're conscious the entire time. You're slowly transposed from one body to another. If, I mean, makes you know some sense. I'm, I'm more sense. I'm more willing to entertain uh, that than a yeah. than a snap cons copy paste. Yeah, 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 guys, yeah. That, that whole discussion is based on a really stupid axiom that oh, you have to delete the original. That's absolutely not a thing at all. There's no reason why you but, couldn't but just nobody, copy it. Some people, it's it's a whole separate then issue it's just though. Two like. <laughs> Yeah, like, am, yeah. am I comfortable with there just being another me? I, I would have to think about it. And that's, that's like a separate question. Oh, I think it would be really funny. Just, oh. like, just like in Homestuck with little Hal. The Dubu Collective would be comfortable with having oh, a Oh, yeah, you would, you fucking motherfucker. <laughs> that, that, also happens, that happens in Serial Experiments uh, Lane, and the alternate version ruins her life. So, you know, it can I, be scary. Well, I, that goes back to the horrors of technology well, needing to create I, conflict I, I thing. Would, I, uh, sure. Here's what I would do. I would mm -hmm. make a copy of myself in a robot body so that I could beat it up if it, you know. It, <laughs> so, so that it's, it's oh, got for a confidence it, for self esteem? Like, <laughs> fuck you, dude. I'm the no, good no, one. No, no, what I mean is if it tries to fuck up my life, it still has a physical presence and it can't run and hide uh. in the internet. <laughs> like it's it it, it it it's just it's just on a chip, and if I you just keep it on a flash it, drive in if, your pocket, and you'll flush it down the toilet as soon as it starts acting a bitch. Hey, if yeah, fucking yeah. So if fucking like, your clone is not gay, is beating up your clone like not violent? Is well, it just like self-flagellation? You know, what are the laws here? Dude, guys, I if I could clone myself, like my brain, I would like immediately start an animation studio that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, might, you might think I it's a joke, but I Davu fantasize about that every day. I'm just like, man, I just thought of a yeah, funny I animation exactly I could do. Mean. Oh fuck, there's oh only one of me. It would take too Wait, long. I could, I oh, could finally get a someone, get someone to do textures for me and do all my video editing. Yeah, Dude, imagine, me, they'd be miserable, but I'd pay them nominally. We didn't really think about that, but imagine like the logical extreme of that. What if like one guy was like, okay, um, 
I'm just gonna keep making copies of myself until I can fucking run everything. And then he just starts yep. like, and yeah. then like 90 yeah. percent of all people are this guy now. He just took up all the hard yeah. drive space. Oh my god, it's Shadow Clone Jutsu <laughs> and it's in real fucking life. Fucking Ben, and the worst part is it's fucking Ben. Oh no, then no the one in the shit. entire universe is never on time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, uh, get fucked, Ben. <laughs> yeah, the, the the whole thing with like having copies of yourself. Like, if it was a uh, like physical human clones, then it would be weird. Like, who, you're a human mm-hmm. being, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But if you're a robot, you're le- you, I can program you to not care about being the main one. So well, I can be really the main you. one. Yeah, I know. But like, okay, um, okay. you can argue that I, I am definitely or something. as well. I definitely yeah, yeah. am interested, and this is something like Rick and Morty explores a lot, where he always makes like a clone, but there's something different. And right. it's like usually they they just like he'll say you know this clone doesn't have a sense of self or like it's not basically you can abuse this thing and it is not a human rights violation because it's not quite <laughs> human you know or right, it's not right. quite you and I always find that really fascinating I always wonder what if I would use it like would I feel too bad you know because like Rick's always raising that like people you know other people who he. Uh, you know, shows these clones are always like horrified, and he's like, "Yeah, but you know, it's not, it's not quite human." Mm. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, you know, I remember. Uh, is Rick smart enough though? It. Is Rick smart enough to make an argument that lets him basically do whatever he wants, so he can find a way to justify, you know, killing oh, whoever yeah. Morty just accidentally killed? True. Yeah. You know, uh, I know, there. like Bill Whittle, a guy who's uh, like big into futurism and space exploration, like he gets invited to like mm-hmm. SpaceX sometimes, stuff like that, right? And like he got invited cool. to like some showing of some new robot, like wa- animal thing. It just like walks around on four legs, but it like intelligently reads the, the terrain in order to get around, right? And the guy, oh. and one of the engineers is like, "Yeah, it's pretty cool." He kicks it like kicks it right in the head equivalent, and like the and like the robot like 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 tries to like catch its balance and then, like steadily gets back up. And yeah. Bill was like, I had to restrain myself from getting mad at the man because I I felt like he yeah, had just I hurt know, right? something. I know. And it's like, ooh, I love watching videos of people beat it's up fucking, robots. It's fucking Boston Dynamics, to... man. Boston Dynamics, the most evil people yeah. on the planet, yeah. according to some uh, <laughs> robot rights groups. Yeah, you know, yeah. you want. Know yeah. It's really it's it's so fascinating though because like it's. It, it really is interesting how we prescribe like uh, moral consideration like that. Like it just because mm-hmm. it moves in a way that we've seen I mean, things that we generally give moral consideration exactly. to. But that, it was just like us. it was just like some random robot stiffly walking around. Even if it looked more human, and someone knocked it over, like ha ha, you know, there yeah. wouldn't be any like of the, that. The whole thing about that to animals. morality, like yeah. the whole thing about like morality coming into the future. There's exactly one sci-fi fictional work that captures it perfectly: Duck Dodgers in the 20s third and a half century where at the very end he's standing on this one tiny little fragment of planet going i win that is morality in the 23rd century (laughs) that sounds cool but i like i like what gib was saying there we we we, the the, the funny thing is people don't think about but like yeah we do this to animals too people treat animals like they have quote unquote souls like humans do when they in fact do not they definitely don't i'm pretty sure god addressed this directly in the bible uh but nonetheless (laughs) nonetheless uh the guy you don't don't. believe exists shout out to back in your argument (laughs) Well, yeah, it's, I use it when it's convenient. For Sorry, guys, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> talk to God about What a fucking blue pilled cock! <laughs> so, dude, like, okay, so I was, at, you know, I was to answer finally the question I raised a while ago of like, how would I adopt it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this whole consciousness right. issue just cannot be fucking solved. I mean, maybe there'd be some post singularity consciousness that could just convince the shit out of me, but then I'd be confused as to whether or not maybe it's just so smart it can trick me into thinking it. You know, who knows? Oh, but that's so true. for me, the, the solution's pretty fucking simple. Like, like I said, get like a body enhancing like body uh lengthening uh you know extensions or whatever and you know try to and just try and Those live exist now, in know. my body as long as i can and eventually things might yeah, come to I a head and when there's no other I choice want, then go uh, ahead fucking upload me you know because i'm gonna die anyway whatever right yeah I think I'll get nano machines to body lengthen my penis. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, sad, the sad truth here is that we were all born in the wrong generation when it comes yeah. to this. Like, we can't. The, the, like, I really, I'm really hoping that I can taste a little bit of it when I'm like yeah. 70. Well, if that's, I make it that far. I mean, I think we hopefully. will all at least make it far enough for some augmentation. But I really mm-hmm. want this exact same podcast to be done like every 20 years by a different, like, <laughs> like the next generation of us, like our kids, to do this podcast. Mm-hmm. And tell mm-hmm. it because our kids are all going to be raised by us, a bunch of fucking uh, goddamn sci fi weeaboos who are going to yep. like rant about the glories of technology the whole time. So I want to hear their opinions, or they're like, oh yeah, they'll of rebel course and be like, we're going to, they're all Amish. 
<laughs> oh, just like yeah. having around the campfires. <laughs> I want to know they if, they, be, uh, if they're like, oh, why would I want my physical form? Like, f- my ego is, if anything, the only weakness I have. I would, I would love to be a no. part of the cloud. You know, like I, I want to know if that's. I don't how know feel. if this is likely to happen, but I always kind of wonder if, like, what if uh, will we hit a plateau where people are just satisfied with the level of technology? It's like where all your physical needs are met. Oh, why yeah. bother? Oh, like, keep working prediction. on this. Shit. I have another like prediction based on not really because we gotta get off the planet, but a prediction diffuser. Well, I agree. I, guess. I agree. Based on different mm-hmm. predictions that are right and wrong. Because as I said, you know, you, you look at back in the past, like, you know, 1800s, people are like, oh, we think by the year 1905, everyone will have jet packs. Woo, of course they will, right? Um, and, like, also, let me see, what sci-fi... There, there was, like, some sci-fi book from, like, 1870 where some guys go to the moon via cannon, right? And this was actually talked about in a book. <laughs> okay. Okay. It was actually talked about in a book about, uh, it was actually The Art of Game Design, A Book of Lenses by Jesse Scheel. But it was talking about how at the time, everyone kind of assumed that would happen, or, or like, like it sort, just sort of made sense in sort of a pulpy sort of way, because cannons, at the time, were getting a whole lot better constantly, right? So, the, so really, when you look at everyone who was wrong about the level of steampunk that would happen by the, ni- by the 20th century during the 19th century is because they thought the same kind of rapid innovation, steam technology, you know, machines mm-hmm. and products and stuff, they thought that was going to just keep infinitely increasing. Yeah. And so the same thing with that. It's the same thing with uh, the 60s. Like right, you, right. You, that, you that, had like Lost Star in Trek. Space, yeah. like the year 1997, we're going to leave Earth, and it's just because that's what the whole space race was going on. And like, right. Why would so, that so, stop? Yeah. You know, so, yeah, just, I, what I, it is. I like what, that you brought the sub to because I do sometimes, I lately I've had more and more doubts about computer technology actually Ever being, advancing yeah. because it doesn't feel... Like it's been advancing faster lately. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you yeah. Know, so like, like going back to what I was saying before about like the internet thing, right? Like or computers in general. During the twentieth century, people thought like technology was going to advance more, like with machines or industry or something like that. People didn't really see the whole computer thing coming until it was too late. And so one guy pointed out that they got like infinitely more powerful every ten years. So I can see everyone making the same mistake again, which is that oh, this whole progress that we're making is just going to keep happening infinitely because that's our closed-minded you know primate brain assumption right but it could end up being something totally yeah. different it could end up being just oh 3d printers fuck off 3d printers they just do everything now or it could be some uh, yeah. fucking fidget spinners of course let's like hashtag 2017 <laughs> they end up we end up in like a Turns post singular the society to yeah we, 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 so you we, just spin yeah, we look up to the sky and, and the fidget spinning, spinners dude. sun is just going off and generating energy for everyone and we have like fidget spinners instead of hearts you know Oh, you know what? No, I'm sorry. That wasn't memeing up. It's just going to be emoji. Emoji are the secret to, like, all of life. <laughs> My it's... prediction is mm-hmm. that computers are going to stop... The, the aesthetic of computers and, and metal and sci-fi is going to get, oh, who cares? And then they're going to go back to making... They're going to make computers look like wood, and then pirates are going to come back, and I'm going to be a pirate. <laughs> <clears throat> By the way, give, give just he... hoping for a second dark age. We can all just go back to the good old <laughs> yeah. days. A, d- a dark age, a dark age, just aesthetic wise. It, just, it <laughs> looks like that, but How's everything that? else is like perfect. We By just turn way, all I... the lights off. It's a dark age. <laughs> oh. how's this how's this for a, a millennial perspective when before digi said something like how uh technology needs to keep advancing people won't give up because we need to get off the planet i was going to really say as a real counter argument yeah well that didn't work for krypton now did it you idiot <laughs> and, then I, and, and then i thought for a second and i was like oh I, wait a minute <laughs> well i was thinking what my train of thought went after that is really we have to escape mm-hmm. the universe because that, the whole exactly universe right. dies exactly eventually. Right. So, guys, we've only mm-hmm. got like six trillion years left. We've yeah. got to do something. Exactly. We got to we got we to rise above our three dimensional limits, and we have yeah. to. Become higher than that's what, be. No, Incidentally, that's what that show Kado is about. It, it, yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't oh, yeah. explore this we in need an to, interesting God, way. Yeah, you're right, Tom. We need to break our 3D limits. We need to vibrate higher to leave this Earth of 3D to <laughs> one Earth of 4D or 5D. Going to the 5D is exactly what we need to do. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds was the answer all along. Here <laughs> we go, baby. Tom, I we, wanted we just to have to do say, everything on motorcycles. That's the solution. <laughs> That's the secret. That's the secret. I was really glad that Tom, um, that you explained what you would do the same way you did four years ago on uh, on a different podcast, because hmm. you hmm. really like. I've thought when I think about transhumanism, I think about it in terms of what Tom said about how like all your organs Ooh. and stuff can just fail, and like that to me is what makes it feel urgent. Like, we could talk about this as, like, yeah, yeah. sci-fi concepts we all want, but, like, when I think about my fucking physical form and how shit it is, and, like, right? like my, my brother terrifying, Victor... terrifying, dude. My brother Victor had to have his pancreas removed... 
because it almost exploded. What the fuck? And the pa- and not not the pancreas. I meant the um, the appendix. His appendix right, had okay. to be removed because he got appendicitis, and it it would have blown up. And what happens if your appendix explodes is that it can damage your other organs and kill you. Well, what does mm-hmm. your appendix do? Literally nothing. The only thing the appendix is there for is to explode and kill you. <laughs> uh, so why the fuck have we not figured out, like, why is that not just I, something we can remove at birth? Well, because it's too dangerous to operate I hear that all the time. I hear that every yeah, single yeah. time that the appendix is pointless. <laughs> that, it can't be completely pointless. It's, it's that it, it, it once had a, a point, use. but it doesn't. Yeah. Just like your tonsils. Like, that's why if you get, if you keep getting tonsillitis, they just take them out because they don't actually do anything. We had them in mm. a time where, the, like, the air uh, of the earth was different, you know, yeah, and it helped we're, to filter we're a air. We're perpetual transitional form. Yeah, right. there's so much. Indeed. There's lots of fucking Indeed. design craft in our DNA, and it's bullshit. Gigi, you, Gigi's you entirely right. Uh, I, I, it digested plant matter, I think. I could be thinking of the wrong thing. Whatever um, it is, it, it, we don't need it because that's why they can just take it out. Like if you get appendicitis, they just remove yeah. the thing. Oh yeah, and, then and you you, it, you don't miss it. Oh, you know? and you guys there's zero uh, cases of people. Uh, you guys going, know uh, like goosebumps. That's because it's supposed to make your fur stand mm-hmm. up on end to make it look bigger. That's uh, right. To make well, it look bigger to scare pranked. off predators and shit. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. I did not know that, incidentally. Yeah. Uh, well, does anybody have anything else to say about transhumanism, or do we want to move into questions? Because I got I a like bunch of good ones. I like transhumanism. I like, I want to be a train. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think the thing to, to, to uh, take relish in is that eventually we're going to have to iterate on all this technology really fast, because when the technological singularity does happen, and we have machines that are smarter than humans, we're all going to feel really bad about it, because we have oh, fragile yeah. human egos, and that's when we're going to become <clears throat> I re- fucking oh, gods. I remember being in Digi's kitchen one time, talking about, like, a CGP Grey, like, one of his episodes of a Hello Internet, where he was like, yeah, you know, guys, like, I don't know if I'm really into, po- like, like a beyond human AI at this point, because, like, think about it. Like, yeah, we think they'll have our interests in mind, but, like, they're more intelligent than us. Imagine if, like, gorillas had in invented humans. Imagine if gorillas made humans. You think that would turn out well? And Shade walked up behind me and said, that album sucked. (laughs) 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 I remember that. I remember remember that that. too. That's fucking classic. Oh, fuck. I I wanted to keep going, but I just want to end on that note. There's nothing (laughs) I can add that's better. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, The the most important thing about this is just this all needs to happen before I specifically die. Absolutely. That is the only thing that matters. Well, hey, agreed. Uh, Let's get to move on. To to transition into questions, because the first one is super relevant that I found. Okay. Um, From Mm -hmm. Gray9, he asks, scientists announce we will be in a post-scarcity society by next week. Mm. What plans do you make? Oh, fuck complicated yeah. uh i mean what i do is i quit my job immediately and just start doing the content i want to yeah. do all the Absolutely. time I, That's yeah I, I guess I that would be my first because like i don't know what's mm-hmm. gonna happen once it happens oh, so shit. like i right, have to worry about all that shit i actually have a not. really specific answer i would uh tell all those people who are uh poised to adopt some of my baby hamsters no thanks man i'm printing myself some more cages and a bigger Aww. room <laughs> that's adorable Hippo. I I would um, spend I would forget about YouTube because fuck it, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fuck not yeah. that important. I would spend all of my time r- uh, writing Homest- uh, Homestuck. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. I, I no. would write and I would make it twice as long as Homestuck because I have all the time in the world. So does post scarcity society mean that none of us need jobs? Of course, it's oh, so definitely think, true. Okay, yeah. Honestly, no. I'd probably I'm, stop I'm doing Weagle and focus off, on other projects. Yeah, yeah I'm oh, immediately sorry, off the internet forever. First of all, um, all I do is make really fucking weird shit with Munchie. That's my... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking right, right. Post scarcity, we'd all just go... We'd, we'd, no money. Yeah. You'd just, just go hang to out. one place does, does and hang out and play video games Does still need to finish school forever. in a post-scarcity world? I don't know. But me and Munchie yeah, are just going to hang out and, like, headbutt things. Like... Oh, you know like, what? I'll, I'll make a whole... Like, I'll make a whole thing. Like, other... I don't even want to film this for myself. I don't want to post this on YouTube. I just want me and Munchie to become so known for headbutting things that people start <laughs> recording us. And, like... like we get, we get I mean... Funded by uh, like sponsorships and like movie deals, you know. On on that Not front, that we need funding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, on, on that front, I would immediately go find a place for PCP HQ. That's immediately yeah. what I would do. Fucking would, a man-made uh, island on the Pacific, bitch. 
<laughs> Wherever's appropriate, I would. It'd I would be begin in the that shape quest. of the PCP it's logo. So, it's really hard. The for only me reason to process, I'm not doing that now is because of like, money. Uh-huh. I can't think of how to imagine the world without needing money. Like I can't. Th- like, doesn't it seem Build like the obvious us. answer is I'll just go fuck all day? Like I'll just have sex and drink and I don't, smoke. Oh, weed right, all day. Like, we don't even about post post scarcity society that it's always yeah. interested me. Is people imagine like people frame it like oh it's like going to be this utopia thing where there's no need to work or anything? Money is just a me like the only reason people even really want money is because what it facilitates it facilitates power it mm-hmm. facilitates status yeah and right. like your desire for power and status does not go away if you don't need money because you yeah. still have to have some way to obtain those things is there so no... i don't think society is going to change as much as we all think it will does post scarcity mm-hmm. mean that there is no scarcity of marijuana does that well, mean it's just uh, every... you could probably 3d print it you could probably 3d print that okay <laughs> dude no I'm just like 3d print myself weed and watch everything ever made. you know you that's what you I can do. already 3d print weed it's called planting it and growing it my friend <laughs> he, he's not he's not wrong but you know that that, that honestly does <laughs> that does bring in an interesting question because the, the idea of like pcp hq it, it is a money-making operation at the end of the day. And, yeah. and as Tom said, like, that still will be necessary. But, like, my plans for to get everybody here together to do that do hinge on the idea that you guys will be motivated to make yeah. content, you know, to, well, to mean, make yeah. money. Way, and maybe that would change. I don't know. The way I see it, Nate, is that the difference mm-hmm. between uh, pre uh, scarcity and post scarcity PCP. Scarcity yeah. PCP is we all meet up in one place to make <laughs> the best content we've uh-huh. ever made. Uh-huh. Post scarcity is we all meet up and we exclusively make the blue glow. Like that's Hell it. yeah. all <laughs> let's plays. Like all we do is let's play twenty four seven because all we want to do is play video games. Like so, what I've come to realize now now that I've started playing video games again. Um, which I've been doing for the last like couple months. I've been playing lots of games, and I realize mm-hmm. that I have no real desire to do anything but play video games and listen to the Dick Show. Really? Okay, that listen to this, life. dude. dude listen that to is this so though. interesting exactly. to me because I feel totally opposed. Did, to did that you? That's entirely. exactly. You gotta, you gotta... <laughs> no, go ahead, Nate. Oh, okay, but I was just gonna say I I know where you're coming from, but but here's the thing. Uh, for most of my life, I did exactly that. I watched anime and played video games. It's it's only recently that I have felt the best about myself in my life that I ever have because I'm finally accomplishing something for but myself. But that's because I have made you my live claim. in a society where those things are not helpful to do. Well, but but that's no matter what we I do, disagree. humans are social animals, and we we want to have like I, I, I'm I'm not afraid to say it. Like uh, now that I have a little bit of like power in society, like I have an audience that respects me to some degree, and people like what I do, and I have something to offer that allows me to have a little bit of influence. It's it's those facts. Actors that appeal to me inherently as a human male, yeah. uh, probably women well, too. For, but for me, for me personally, yeah. like, like a hundred percent of all the problems in my life are tied to my influence and talking to other people. So maybe that's why I'm I, going well, in the other regressive my, direction. I don't agree with either of you. My, my motivation for, for doing things is entirely uh-huh. because I feel like I have an obligation as a human being to 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 use my skills and my talents in the best way that I can. The the only reason mm-hmm. I want an audience is because I need money and that's the best yeah. way to get it for doing the work that I want to do. And the mm-hmm. only reason I bother doing like fucking gay YouTube shit that can easily generate money is because I need that money. If I didn't need Does money, the... I would uh-huh. do nothing that would get me in that w- I would not focus on building an audience because I don't care about that. I wouldn't focus but, on but money because it wouldn't I, exist. I'm curious though. I'm curious though. Doesn't your Tom doesn't your work only have meaning because it has an audience? Yeah, that's what I was Absolutely gonna bring not. up. But for me, I no? don't I don't think so at all. Well for me at I least mean, when because I was younger my... I, for the Lurth for the wait, first wait, like, ten years. First. For uh-huh. the first ten years that I made things, I had mm-hmm. no audience at all. And I was right, right. upset that I didn't, but it didn't stop me from making it. I wanted to do it not because I want I mean, of course you want an audience to see it, but even if you had told me tell me right now that like your project will never have an, an audience because I'm already mm-hmm. working under that assumption that's why I put so much effort now in trying to be more active on the PCPs I'm assuming this is how I'm going to make money and the pro- content mm-hmm. I actually want to do is never going to get the level of success that it would need to be my job but that doesn't I have no intention okay. of stopping to do yeah. it because that's like the only thing I feel that like gives my life actual e- meaning uh, and value yeah for me it's I a, hear what you're saying the, it's just that specifically the, you're, you're talking about consuming art though and like the, the, the use that art has in the world is that people see it and then like enjoy it and stuff right so like isn't that just an inherent part no, the thing, of the thing that process? i've been trying to, no? to talk about this yeah, whole time yeah. is 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 that in a post scarcity society people yeah. won't need huge audiences but they mm-hmm. can all yeah. like you know a- anything i want to make right. is for a few people I'm not, like 
Yeah. I want I want to make the Horstuck thing yeah. to impress anyone who likes Homestuck and myself and close friends. And if it's an audience of a maximum of 20 people, it wouldn't matter to me because that's all I was making it for. I was making yeah. it for me and a few other uh, people. That's I agree the whole with thing. that. Exactly. It's like yeah. I don't, would be for everyone. I'm not saying I don't want an audience and I wouldn't like it. I'm just saying it's complete. Like the work that I want to do, I want to do because I want to see it existing. You know what's- you know what's interesting about this? That's why I want to go to, to PCP HQ, by the way, yeah. is, is is to hang out with you. And the content made, like in Let's Play form, can entertain a few people. But the the the, the reason I would move is so that I could hang out with you and it would be, like, fun and social. I, I totally agree. But this this is very interesting to me. This strikes me as a fundamental difference in what we're, like, what, what our goals are. Because my goal is specifically to communicate like my ideas to people and have them receive them which is why like my my really primary goal is to is to package them in a way that both I enjoy but that people will be receptive to so that they'll hear what I'm saying and like I think I'm right so I want them to hear me and be swayed by my opinion so like that that's what I'm aiming I for the vehicle to get there is is open to Nate I think you know, the difference whatever. between is because you're mm-hmm. trying to you're you're more worried you're trying to communicate your ideas like yeah. your videos have a point like this is my opinion on something right and right in order to make the the art I guess of that you it needs to affect as many people as possible where like my mm-hmm. like passion project is like telling a story and like I don't need to okay. prove it to anybody I just want it to exist so I think yeah. because the like, the goals okay. of those I, projects okay. are different I totally get sure. both of you because I there's like when I make a video like here's this thing about anime that everybody's getting wrong like the only mm-hmm. real value in that is correcting other people's minds when I right, make like right. my music. I don't give a single fuck who listens to it. Like I, if if I, I have like one person buying it, that's fine. I just want it to exist for my own sake because it's something that I needed to be off of my chest, you know. And I think I would go I much more down that road um, if I had, you know, if I didn't have to worry about. Yeah, lying. I guess. Okay, like, like yeah. I guess I hear what you're saying. Specific plans. If post scarcity is announced, I would tell Deji, hey, uh, you know. If you want to fucking have me edit any videos, go ahead, but no schedule on I'm not going to write anything. Right? Okay. Hey, get <laughs> fucked, Digi! Yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not going to write a single video ever again if I don't need money. Well, I guess I'll just but, still you know, watch anime the, occasionally. The thing, and then also, I think I'd still... I think I'd just spend all my time just making a game, except uh, it would have all the things I, I want to be in a game, rather than well, some of the things heavily censored that I'm planning on putting in my game. Gabe, what were you saying, Gabe? I was gonna say, like, in in this society where it, it would be like all the artists are suddenly making what they want, mm-hmm. and all of the people on YouTube who are doing clickbait will die because oh, they don't care yes. about it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Finally! Shit. The art landscape Dude, would change I, overnight. I, you know what's yeah. fascinating? I just watched, like, Rice Gum's, uh, like, reaction to the to the roast of him or whatever, and he was talking about, like, how this is what he lives for. He lives for drama, like, as a result of, you know, the content cop that just came out. And I was just like, what kind of life? Do you live where you like this is your purpose in life to respond to people talking? Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Go on, Gib. The, I no, think no, it was, was done. It. Let that me get into it. our okay, next I question, see. which uh, dovetails pretty nicely out of that one. Uh, mm. Vampire. Wait, Dif- hang on. Did you? Are these coming from the patron lounge? Yes, these are coming. How from the How could you possibly lounge. access such a place? If I need you to know. We're paying us for our <laughs> amazing content. Then you would be able to contribute questions to the show, because uh, you know, uh, fuck wow. you otherwise. Um, wow. <laughs> what a great pitch! Vampire Patreon.com slash best. Oh, I was going to contribute to ever. our personal post scarcity society and give us your money. Yeah, Patreon.com slash yeah. the procrastinators. Okay, there you go. Which literally, <laughs> literally everything we just said about post scarcity will also become true of our personal careers if the PCP made enough money to just be our day job. It's very true. <laughs> very true. Um, <laughs> Vampire Giffy asks a, a two part question. What is your best project that never saw the light of day, and what is the worst thing you've made that has seen the light of day? Oh, shit. Nate, you could start us off if you, uh, if you want to. Oh, man. I mean, the, the the first part, things that have not seen the light of day, extensive work. I mean, I have not made anything that is good that I have not released. I was actually just talking to you guys the other day about how, like, I have never completed a video and then not released it. Ever, I I mean I don't. Uh, it spend doesn't time have to be things. completed. Let's just say like the best project idea mm-hmm. that fell through. You know, 
fell through. I mean, there's there's always well, a, like it, that you've abandoned. Yeah, like if there, there's a project there, that you were working mm-hmm. on that you feel like would have been amazing, but it has not been completed. And I mean, I'm well known completed. to have taken a very long time to actually uh, release my uh, best anime ever, Ghost in the Shell, which I, I but am working on. But it will eventually. But but it will. But th- there are several other projects that I have not announced of that same ilk that like I know things about them and have produced pieces of them already. But they are they are ways out. Uh, but in terms of things that got dropped, I mean, there's always what me and Ben talk about of the Raise These Bros, which I actually did make a song for. Uh, uh, for like, it was going to be like the finale of T-Bap or something, uh, but oh, we never, that's what that was never got do. around to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For, uh, that, that song floats around in my hard drive somewhere. All right. Oh. Uh, and, and, and But uh, in terms of things that are uh, bad that I did release, I mean, I, uh, I think I generally make good stuff. Ben and I did a ice bucket challenge on T-Bap a while ago. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that wasn't great. That wasn't great. Though it did have a cool storyline where my glasses broke, or rather Keg Standard, not me. His glasses broke, and uh, that was very sad. I don't know. It's all great. Everything I've ever made is fantastic. I, I can answer it pretty quickly. I mean, my okay. biggest projects, I mean, I've had one idea for a song parody that would require, like, like a slideshow hmm. animation in order to make sense, and I've, I've had it as an idea mm-hmm. for, like, four years. I've never told anyone on the internet about it because I might still do it, whatever. I mean, really, sure, the biggest sure. thing that I seem to systemically be un- unable to motivate myself to finish is, like, a big analysis of the Mario and Luigi series because it, it's, it's, it's just overwhelming uh, yes. because when I really start to think about it critically, I honestly think there is an, enough there that's all original points that are not redundant off of existing analysis videos of any game at all. It's, like, mm-hmm. it's like a, it's, it's honestly as dense with, like, things to talk about as, like, the Star Wars prequels. So, I mean, not quite as, like, culturally relevant, of course, not by a long shot, mm-hmm. but, like... It it would just be a huge fucking project that I could honestly spend a whole year on, so I, I end up tensing up and just not caring enough, right? If something reminds me about the current Mario and Luigi games that makes me upset, it only lasts for uh, until the afternoon, and then I just wasted like some hours typing up some shit on Google <laughs> Drive or even recording something. So that's stupid. I, talk about like the worst thing I've made. I mean, if you're gonna be technical, there's like a sh- shitload of just boring tweets. So just biggest failure in my eyes was when I did a video on Big Hero Six and like <laughs> just had so many great analysis things to say but just I like that video pu- yeah but it pushed it through so many stupid like misguided writing techniques that it's like you really can't appreciate how much analysis is in it like when I was writing it up until even when I released it it was like months later when I went back to it and was like oh right the audience hasn't would all- you say that's the would you say that's the worst thing you've put out, or just no. the one that is the I, most discordant from what it was? Yeah, what you yeah, oh, that, yeah. Not all, not all the worst thing, of course, because yeah, okay. like worst thing is a stupid yeah. thing to talk about when you're when you're an internet content creator. Am I right, fellas? Wow. But no, that's the one where it's like <laughs> I wrote it based on the idea that you had just seen the movie twice and also taking notes like I was. It's a stupid lack of empathy with the audience. I completely fucked up on. And when I watch it back, I'm like, there's no way you can actually appreciate my points. Uh, oh, and also, I, I still was not even decent at audio narration, too, so it's just hard to even listen to. So when I think about it, yeah, the, the, okay, the dissonance okay. between how I thought about it at the time versus now, it's that one. Sure. Okay, Tom, do you have an answer for this? Um, I think the best idea that I've dropped, and hopefully someday I'll come back to it when I have the, the skill to properly realize it, because I think it's probably the greatest idea I've ever had, is uh, it started out as a, as a just a, a narrative story, but I realized that the point I was trying to tell would be way better as a game. Um, I don't want to get too much into it, because like, even to talk mm-hmm. about the idea would spoil it, and I do still want to make it someday, but it's a game that would have a dynamic art style, and the, as the art style changes throughout the game, it also reinforces the thematic oh, points going on in it. That's fucking cool. Damn. Okay. Um, Sounds and, complex, like, but that's cool. It's, it's oh god, it's, if, if I can, that's the one, number one reason I want transhumanism, probably need like another 70 years to get good enough to make <laughs> this game properly, so get on it, people. Um, and the worst thing that I've ever released is everything that was on my very first YouTube channel that mercifully I deleted so no one can ever find it. <laughs> Thank God. Hippo? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I've, I've got a thing. Uh, the best thing that I never got around to was an idea I had while listening to Pink Floyd, and it was to animate the entirety of Pink Floyd's The Wall but replacing the characters uh, in the songs with My Little Pony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would that's imagine that's so idea hard. that never saw the light who is, of who, who is Have a Cigar about? Who's the Have a Cigar guy? <laughs> that's not in the wall. Oh, I fucked up. It's the wrong album. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, never mind. I also had an idea for animating uh, the division bell, 
uh, to be about uh, Dick Masterson and, and Maddox yes. uh, and that, that whole thing. Not bad. Because a lot of those songs are like, oh, it, it, you can just imagine them talking to each other, singing to each other like this. <laughs> yeah. It's great, but uh, you know, n- never ever gonna have the time to animate something like that. Yeah. And also, yeah. Uh, copyright would not let me monetize it afterwards. So, nope. Um, but the the worst thing I did publish was, uh, uh it's, I don't know, some sh- why it's vlog. okay to clop, you degenerate pony fucker. I've been on to you That's since an day okay one. one. No, I actually I've like had, that video I've, a lot. I'm just memeing you. I, I, I've, I, I've made like a couple like, eh, whatever sort of vlogs, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. I don't pay attention to the, my, my failures. It's a bad idea. I, As a content... Yeah, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Um, I have no idea how to answer this because I have mm-hmm. so many answers for both. Like, mm-hmm. I have... like gallons of unreleased content like <laughs> and and the thing is that these days i've sort of been going back through a lot of it and just like releasing the concepts and shit like you know my my novel i wrote back in 2010 like for six years that would have probably been the best thing that never saw the light of day but now mm. i've gone ahead and just released it unfinished onto the internet um tons and tons of great story concepts my personal favorite has always been um Maho Shoujo to Henshin Papa, which is the, the, the magical girl and transforming dad, where separately a daughter and father, the daughter becomes a magical girl and the dad becomes a transforming hero. And they don't, they're not even aware of it, but then eventually they have to work together. Um, but like, I, I just have like a thousand cool. ideas. I have tons of analysis videos that have never been made, album mm-hmm. ideas, songs that I have fully written in my head, but because I cannot perform instruments, there is no way to translate them to um, right. to the internet, right. except in acapella versions that I've released, well. <laughs> just as like proof of concept <laughs> of their existence. <laughs> um, Actually, interesting you mentioned that, Digi. I remember watching the diaries, like the, the production diaries for uh, that M. Strange guy he had uh-huh. for uh, his third film, and he showed this production of like you can get a VST that um, you hum and it takes that and applies it to any instrument. It made the entire soundtrack. By oh humming my it. god, I, I need that badly. Fascinating. <laughs> that is the coolest shit I've ever heard of. Yeah, and if I've I like, can find I've, it, I will use it. Immediately. That's always in the back of my head of like if I ever start getting into animation for real and I need to do music, yeah. that's that's the way I'm gonna do it. Yeah, and as for the worst thing I've made that's seen the light of day, this is equally difficult to answer because I've been on the internet since 2001 and, like, I've never deleted anything. Like, there's some stuff that's set to private, but it saw the light of day at some point. Um, what comes to mind first is the otaku sex hotline. <laughs> what? The, whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, what? I've never one. heard of this. <laughs> I, told, I told this story in detail on a recent Digi in May, I think. No, on a pub crawl. A recent mm-hmm. pub crawl, I told this story. But uh, but to summarize, I had a Tumblr that was supposed to be for people to, like, tell us about their, like, weird otaku-based sex hang-ups, <laughs> and we would, like, give advice. <laughs> Except the real reason it existed was so that I eventually could just post my weird sex hang-ups uh, oh. and answer it <laughs> myself. Uh, and, of course. Um, after, after that happened, which was probably, like, the seventh post on the blog, it completely died. Like, no one, everyone was just in <laughs> abject horror. Of what I had done. <laughs> Did you? Okay, let me frame it this way. What of anything you've released on the internet are you the most ashamed of to think about right now? If you want to divulge that. Was, that? Well, that was what came to mind first. Oh, the yeah. Sex right, that's a good sign. That or like. <laughs> Just tons of writing about like otaku sexuality I did that doesn't hold up. Uh, back, otaku sexuality back in the 2010 oh. or so. Um, <laughs> Lots of YouTube videos that are just cringeworthy. Some of them are entertaining, though. Like, uh, there's one Digi Bro, uh, Digi Digital Boy cracks open the Double Down, where I just review the <laughs> Double Down from KFC. But I'm like so awkward and creepy looking that it's like watching a like a murderer <laughs> rapist eat a Double Down. Um, there's just a lot. Like, there's tons and tons of content I've made because I've been on the internet for so I, fucking long, and most of it's I most of it's time. cringeworthy. <laughs> I remember the time you pretended to be a pony and you were running around. That I'm very bed. proud of. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> that awesome. Um, I've rewatched that. It was recently. awesome only because it. of Victor being in yeah. it. And just like <laughs> that's oh. what made it great. I, poor, I, poor guy. I don't know what the worst thing I've made like since becoming a 
popular YouTuber is. Like, yeah. there's a couple videos I've made that I wasn't proud of. Like, uh, sort of infamously, I had just hidden my um, Zanko no Terror video because I thought it was so badly written. Um, like, there's been a oh, few, yeah, yeah. but not it's, most of the stuff I make has some entertainment value to it. Like, even if it's not amazing, there's something good about it. But if you go back through my history, it's just a nonstop wave of infinite cringe. So, yeah. <laughs> There's um, lots to choose from. There. So my answer for both is everything I've ever made. <laughs> let's let's move on right. to the next question. Um, what loot will you drop when you die? Oh shit, that's a good one. Wait, who who, who said that? That's one? That's from Dry Bones. God damn. I, oh, I would definitely be a pile of sunglasses. A pile of sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'd drop like two Mountain Dews. <laughs> um, a a, pi- a pack of cigarettes, and uh, and also sunglasses, but of a different yes, sort. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I would drop uh, basic economics by Thomas Sowell, which you can't remove, <laughs> and you can't remove it from your inventory. It's like stuck in your inventory, and it like takes up one weight, oh, and, it fu- and you're so pissed off God at it forever. <laughs> Just like how it weighs on your mind that that forbidden knowledge every day, Davu. Uh, yes, yeah. I understand. I understand. Gib, what do you got? <laughs> uh, I can't top that. I can't fucking think of anything. Uh, you, you, uh, 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 just the hippo uh, plush. Guitar. Uh, yeah, hippo plush. That's, that's pretty Or good. guitar strings. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, Maybe a poof of hair. I was going to say poof, that. You know? <laughs> hey, just, if we have any... That's, that's, that's all the same, same shit. That's called cutting my hair off. Uh, <laughs> if we have, that's, uh, your, that's your escape tactics. We, You're like a wob effect. We're gonna do just your hair. If we're going to do any more questions. You cut my whole body off and only the hair will remain. That was the true form. Guys, if doing any more questions, I gotta go, so I uh, I guess I'll just leave now unless we're done. Uh, you can go uh, ahead. We'll go a little right. bit longer. Cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna That's, I'm just gonna post in the Discord my answers to things by listening on my phone, and if someone wants to read oh, me out okay. loud, they can. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> that uh, see good. ya. <laughs> All right. Later, All right. Uh, uh, Tom. Tom yeah. and you. Um, I think mine would probably be an unidentified stylist. And when you go to identify it, you find out it's cursed, and now you have good, you have talent, but infinite depression. <laughs> God damn! I love the thoroughness of that answer. It's perfect. Oh man! God damn! Ben All would right. definitely be like a stylist in a vape for sure. For sure. <laughs> Just the vape. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. It'd be a vape stylist, like two in one. That's yes. The ultimate combo. <laughs> I uh, this one this one might be difficult, but I thought it was interesting because it's so precise. Doc mm-hmm. Chutney asks favorite character design. Oh Jesus oh, Christ! Full stop. Uh, favorite fuck. character design. Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kill a Kill is pretty good anime. Um, I uh, <laughs> I actually like Ryuko is at near the top of my list for sure. Oh, that's what uh, I said. Ryuko, Ryuko does a very Ryuko in her um like her normal outfit is like extremely. I, yeah. I like it a lot, a lot. It's very good. I also like her transform because she does look like Shadow. It's pretty great. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It's gonna sound lazy, but I, I love everything about how Kamina looks. I, you know, I'm, I'm not really a, a big design, tattoo dude. guy. He's got yeah, he's fantastic, and the color design across the series uh, unbelievable. But uh, I, I've never been a big tattoo guy. But just like <laughs> this is not limited the to way anime, he does by it. the way. Like it's any character design that you. Right, that's just where my mind goes. I'm gonna come back with another answer. Somebody else go. Uh oh, I have a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mind Fang from Homestuck. I forget who that is. It's it's Vriska's ancestor, the cool oh, pirate right. uh, queen. Apparent- she goes, says- she's got that cool yes, sword and the and the, the coat. Yeah, 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 apparently also I really like wants that. to shout out Powerpuff Girls Z, the anime version of Powerpuff Girls. Um, what? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, Those I designs were pretty cool. I'm, I'm going g- to have to give my answer as the one character design that I've by far spent the most time obsessing with, which is Romelia Scarlet from Toho. Of course. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I've, I've, she's got everything. Immortal lollies, <laughs> pink. Uh, she's vampire. I'm, <laughs> I'm into all those things. And, like, just the way that... Even more so than the character design herself, the way that um, artists will always draw her in, like, a very red world, like, like, like when you look at art of Romelia, the whole background is always different shades of scarlet. Like, and it's funny because mm-hmm, her mm-hmm. actual character design doesn't really have much red on it, but, like, it's just kind of interpreted as fitting into that world, I guess, and uh, I like that yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I, here's a grab bag, just a couple. Uh, I, I love uh, uh, Griffith. I love uh, cool. the way, yeah. Griffith is dope. Um, it just, I just, I know it's uh, expected, but Nia, I just, like Nia's character design is like oh so creative God. and awesome. It's like unbelievable. 
and uh, the and then finally uh, alone. Her her fucking hair, like it's yeah. it, it's never been done before. No one's ever had Nia's hair, and it's like the best looking hair ever. Especially then, short haired uh, Nia. Is, I, yeah, I love short haired Nia with her with her pink ass hoodie. God, she looks fantastic. And finally, uh, Ramza Lugria in his second and third armor forms, not his basic bitch Order of the North Sky one. That's for pussies. There you go. That's all. <laughs> all right. The Gobs asks, "What is your biggest pet peeve with amateur content creators?" Um, I, it's I can go I right uh, off. Proceeding, <laughs> proceeding a video. It's it's proceeding a video with talking about how they haven't made a video. Oh anymore. my <laughs> god! Ah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck. Yeah. I or, was or gonna... just like all the preamble, the endless yeah, preamble that's up to the fucking. Pretty place. much my thing is having to explain why you're making it, having to like, like just cut, just just give us the content. We don't need like, the background of how you came about to doing it, you know? Because it's always the same story. It's not, yeah. like, you did not have some <laughs> unique epiphany. You just thought, like, it's almost always, at first I didn't think the show would have much to talk about, but turns out it did, and it's like, yeah, no, otherwise you wouldn't have Every made a video, fucking you fucking time. asshole. <laughs> You know what? Honestly, I love those because now I just laugh when I see them. I, <laughs> I laugh the whole I can't fucking do it. time. <laughs> like the the worst part about those is that there's sometimes there's videos that I know are supposed to have an interesting point, and it right, bothers right. me so much I can't watch the video. Like I've That's had like people... my cardinal sin. I still yeah. do that to this day. I think I recorded something today that has that in it. <laughs> you know even, what? It's not even uh, a joke. You know, people have like, and there's ways to do it fine. Like, if you have a lot of charisma or if you've worded it well enough, like, mm-hmm. it can be okay. Mm-hmm. But, like, especially if someone's stumbling through that, it's just like, dude, fucking, you had this in the editing bay. You had time yeah, to look yeah. at this and conclude it was not interesting, you know? <laughs> the thing the thing I would uh, suggest people look at as, like, a, an example of how to do it good is because, uh, you know, everyone likes to have an intro or some sort of logo. But if you watch Tom Scott's videos, he starts his videos um, just talking immediate, immediately about the point, yeah. and he's usually on camera, they and he always wears a, a red shirt. His mm. brand is his face and the red shirt. He doesn't need an intro, <laughs> he doesn't need a logo. Yeah. He just talks about cool shit, right. and everyone loves him. He's a good boy. So do that. I agree. Um, I... And he's the only fucking like like content every week YouTuber I can name who does not stretch their videos at all. Like they're always uh, exact. He he'll he'll fly to fucking Alaska and only make a three minute video out of it. You know. Oh right. Okay. Yeah, I remember that yeah. guy. Yeah, he's he's good. Um, I was gonna say I uh, I always am. I, this isn't like a major criticism, but people with just like very bad audio quality. That's just like a click off. It's not like I hate them. I'm just like, yeah. okay, I'm just not going to no. watch Well, this. you can't listen so to really it. It's not really a pet peeve. I haven't seen a video with bad audio quality in a long time. I, I have, but it's, for me, it's not just the like clarity of the audio. It's if you have fucking noise in the background. It's the fan noise. If like, you got really that, loud. Oh, if the yeah. noise is almost as loud as your voice, then it's like I literally can't yeah, listen it's to just, that. You know? But I just never, I haven't seen a video like that just that like, was trying I, I I have some in mind, but I don't want to shout them out because I don't want to be mean. Um, but there was uh, like j- just like my hero Trump. Instead of answering this question, I'm also going to answer the question that I wish I was asked. And okay. uh, it's it's actually it's the opposite of this. It's what's what's something that annoys me about like too good, too pro animators. And I will shout this guy out. I don't hate this guy at all, but like Holden anime reviews. I don't oh, hate this man. Yeah, but too what, much. <laughs> what is what is baffling about his videos is the unbelievable over editing. And it, it's not like it, it is distracting visually how he will just say he'll talk for like three minutes and animate every single word individually. Yeah. It's like I have to stop watching because I'm like, I cannot believe you invested the amount of time to go do this. I've never it's, made it's, it through that section of one of his videos before. Neither have I. It's a brick fucking wall. <laughs> and I don't hate the guy at all. It's just like, that just just like, wow, what what is this? All right, this one interests me I have no hate lot. for you. Um, Gypsy asks, oh, and uh, Devu's answer to that was complacency. Um, Gypsy sure. asks, what's the worst recommendation you've ever given a friend? <laughs> um... Mm. Devu, fly across the country to come live with me. I'll totally uh, make vlogs you know, every day. Devu might talk shit about that, but but he grew. He grew. He, that was a good oh, experience yeah. for him to have. I just thought that'd be a uh, really funny answer. Unfortunately, he's not. <laughs> he's not in the call. He's. I hope he's laughing his ass off <laughs> if he's listening still. Well, let's edit in some laughs after this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> shit. I I only give great advice. I don't know. Well, it's a recommendation, so it could just be like a show you told somebody to watch, and they 
absolutely hated it. I mean, I've given a few bad oh. recommendations like that before. Hmm. hmm. Just where I didn't didn't. Know I don't well often. I'm stumped by this. Recommend. One. I don't often recommend things to people unless I know that it's their sort of thing. Yeah, but maybe as a kid. So I guess I haven't really. Eh, well, as a kid, I don't give a shit about stuff. <laughs> I yeah, I'm like I'm really thinking back, and I pretty much stopped giving a shit what other people do it just in all aspects of life as long as it's not causing me a problem i'm just too busy to worry about anyone or it, like you go figure out your life on your own go watch funny. whatever anime it's you want it's funny hearing you guys say this stuff because like mm -hmm. i'm someone who is constantly recommending things to everyone always like not just uh -huh. <laughs> shows but like all i do is like try to counsel other people on how to run their lives and i don't know why it's a compulsion of mine i think it's based on my name cuz my name conrad hmm. it means honest counselor and i've known that since i was a little <laughs> okay. kid and like tried to live Sounds up like to a it con to me. so so <laughs> like all i do is try to like counsel people on how to run their lives and usually i give good advice most people tell me i generally give good advice but sometimes I've given advice that has not led people to a happier life. <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm thinking, like, my channel consists of a lot of recommendations these days, like recommending that uh, Takagi-san anime. It just, it just yeah. comes to mind. But that that's great, and I everyone mean, should read it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, when it comes to, like, YouTube stuff, I recommend things that I like, and I explain why I like them. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how I can tell whether somebody was, like, misinformed unless they tell me. Like I don't feel like people were misinformed I'm... and they w they actually didn't like it uh, yeah. based on what I said in my video. By the way, this is the worst recommendation you've ever given a friend, not just random strangers. Uh, yeah. Day. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I about guess friends. I could. Like, I I I know this is ridiculous for me to bring up, but like I tried because I love it so much. I tried to get my friends to watch Gurren Logan with me in in college, and like. God, they were just not into it. They just have did not. Have you give never me like shit. tried to like a uh, wingman for somebody, and then the girl turned out to be shit, or like told someone to pursue a relationship or like a lifestyle choice that just didn't work out for the them? The ones who always fucked up in those choices, in those situations, were the friends though. Like they didn't just go hard enough on whatever it was mm. that I was demanding that they do. Tom, you, you have know, anything like they like fucked this? it up. Or I do like, if you're still don't listening. talk to people in real life, so this never happens. <laughs> oh. oh Jesus! Our niece yeah, that's side also is an out. aspect of me. Like I'm, I'm never really the one giving recommendations because I'm not the one talking to people. I felt like when I asked that question, if anybody had one, it would come to mind immediately. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's yeah, the kind. Yeah. Of, I think that guy was hoping for a real juicy story, but uh, I think it fortunately, was. none of us. We're all <laughs> anti-social fucking yeah. peasants that just hey, lock ourselves me... in our rooms and make YouTube videos. So. Indeed. Let me throw out this question from the from the Twitter here, from at uh, this dorky guy. Oh, great name, dude. Uh, the uh, <laughs> it's uh, guys. Have any opinions on game length? Does anyone feel like you're owed when you buy a sixty dollar game? Where you're did this owed, question come like, from? This is Twitter. This is just Twitter. Uh, okay. Does anyone feel like they're owed a certain amount of time when no. they buy a game? Of a I certain hope the price? game is as short as possible. Even when you pay like sixty bucks for I it, I won't pay sixty dollars for a video game. Yeah, like oh, I, that's I just being an idiot. Like, just like Monkey Island told us not to way back in the day. I yeah. live by that every day. You know what I'm talking about? I you know the reference. I don't happen. like paying money. So <laughs> when a game is more than twenty bucks, twenty pounds, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm sort of like, eh, I really, really need to. I have need, I need a reason to play this. I'll, I'll you know, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's too much, too much. Um, sixty dollars never doesn't matter if it's like a million hours of the exactly my favorite game ever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't i don't want to spend that money so i mean how much was i think i got dark souls on sale i think that's the thing when it's on sale um i don't i don't know yeah. i'm not thinking of i can't really think of the money and the length because dark souls i've played over and over and over and over again right. so it has a lot of length in it mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. and there's lots of different ways to go about playing the game <laughs> So, I guess what I... What, what does game length mean? The amount of time it takes to get 100%? He's basically asking, uh, do you think a that a game has to be long in order for it to justify how much you paid for it? Mm -hmm. um, I I think... I think... Um, I mean, it depends on the length, obviously, but I think a game feels more cool when... You it, it takes you know more than an hour, more than oh, a sure. couple hours, more than a day. I agree. I, mm -hmm. I uh, on the other hand, if it takes me more than two days, then I don't care enough to finish it. Like it's well, never I, gonna happen. I think it definitely well, depends I, I, on the game and the mechanics. Like I think every game has a set of mechanics, and I think they all have a certain amount of shelf life. So yeah, I think it totally yeah. depends on the game. Like yeah. the I'm whole really, thing I'm is really just trying to think. 
of of like really short games because I generally don't like the idea of really short games. It just feels wrong yeah, like, for me I, to I feel like pay they're... money for something that I'm done with. If it's a game I want to play over and over again, like Downwell, how short is too short for you to can like? I mean, it depends uh, on the price and the, probably like the platform and shit. But it's not unreasonable to expect a certain amount of game length from a game. It's just a question of what say, that length is. I will say, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes definitely did not feel like enough meat for what I paid for it. That, well, the, the, it's that's funny because like that game really is incredibly complex and has a lot, tons of details. Like in this one level, it is one level a game, and it takes like an hour to beat. But then you can replay just, it, like collect shit. So like that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah. Is it worth sixty dollars? Definitely not. Which is why they almost immediately reduced the price because they were ashamed of themselves. But yeah, I think I did buy it for sixty dollars. By, by the way, actually. it was only forty when it came out in its uh, defense. The, oh really? The okay. Devu's, but it was not worth forty bucks. Devu mm-hmm. says he wants RPGs to become smaller and shorter and more about the details of a world than the scale of it. He also insists that he's mm-hmm. got a lot of length in him. Hey. Oh, does that mean you have a big <laughs> cock in you right now? Is that what you're what trying to say? To me? <laughs> Yo, that's um, gay, dude. That's gay. I, I for one like. I can rem- I can't unfortunately I can remember the last time I pulled, played uh, paid sixty dollars for a game. What I cannot remember is the last time that I paid sixty dollars for a game and then played it before it was dramatically reduced in price. So, in other words, I see no reason for me to ever buy a game at full price because there's no fucking chance I'm gonna play it before well, it goes down. That in sounds price. like a personal problem. I feel yeah. I feel so like confused about i mean it's not that i don't understand the question it's just hard to think about price and enjoyability mm. of a game based well, on the know, length at the same time you know i uh uh like the, we could do a whole podcast on this i, I agree but the, the guy's question was specifically uh like guys have any opinions on game length and i do have an opinion on it which isn't like a real criticism but it's that so this is another great great chance for me to shout out my favorite game of the year, Hollow Knight, which is a 10 out of 10 experience which with free DLC coming out on Halloween after the first free DLC thing. And the amazing thing about that game is it is 15 fucking dollars. And it's on Steam. It's going to be on Switch at some point soon. I'm just shouting all this because everyone should play Hollow Knight. It's fucking incredible. I do and, plan on playing it very soon. Excellent. Uh, and, like, that game is it's a big metroidvania and it's got lots of content just like if you want to beat it through the first time but it's got it's got that classic thing i love about old uh metroidvania like uh egovania is, is the word i was looking for where uh it's got like true ending shit and all these secrets you can find that like add to the to the gameplay styles you can do and the richness of the world like it's got so much content packed in it for uh, a fifteen dollar price tag that I think you can make some sort of relatively objective standard for like amount of content available and quality of content versus yeah. price of the game. Based on that, I, it's I an definitely unbelievable think that deal. that judgment can be made. Um, yeah. Like I, I totally understand people saying like I'm not gonna pay sixty dollars for a five hour game. Um, yeah. But for me, it's like. I won't do either one. Like, I will not pay $60 for a game, sure. period. Like, I don't care if it has 10,000 hours in it because I won't play a game mm-hmm. that's more mm-hmm. than 15 hours long like or 20 hours or so. Like, um, like Devu says in the comments, uh, a story-based game, I want the length to reflect the narrative. Mechanic-centric game, if I can't get at least 50 hours of fun from it, I feel I've wasted not only my money but also yeah. my time. There you go. If that's it's a, a mechanic-centric method. game, which is the only kind of game I play... Um, I don't want it to last more than two days. I want to explore the mechanic and then go, cool, I get it. Like, I just Devu- played uh, Odin Sphere, um, right, right. which is five different narrative tracks. And mm-hmm. um, you play as a different character in each of the five, but you play through the same levels. And I beat the first character's narrative in about eight hours, and I felt satisfied. And when I got to the second character and realized I had to play through the same levels, I went, oh, well, I beat the game. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's over. <laughs> I did it. Cool. Uh, I only paid thirty dollars for this because I waited years before buying it, um, or however long it took <laughs> before uh, the price went down on this game. Right. So you know, I felt like uh, I got what I wanted, which was a video game to play for a couple days while I listened to podcasts. You know, I love what, what Davu's saying. I love how Davu's framing this though, because like, yeah, like people sometimes are annoyed at like RPGs being so long, but that's just because you really are getting such a a large amount of specifically story being yeah. being, and it's it's framed as such. So, uh, well, I mean, a lot of the time, mm-hmm. it's that there's a lot of game between the story but parts that sort of padded out. Like well, on, it a, on a, in a bad in a bad RPG. I mean, you, you can beat a Final like, Fantasy VII in like thirty hours if you really hustle. 
you can do that. That's still a long time. Yeah, but I think that's all good that's content. That's why I, I that's never pretty... beat RPGs is because at some point, there's usually mm -hmm. a point around the middle of an RPG where it becomes more about the combat than the story um, because essentially RPG games are too big for their stories most of the time. Where like mm -hmm. at some point it gets into the third act and we're like, okay, we know who the villain is. We have to kind of get there. And like that's when it gets a bit more repetitive. The battles get longer. There starts being more and more but, fighting. But that's where, and that's, that's where, where I'm like, ah, the, I don't care anymore. At the end, you've mastered the combat, and you now are getting an excuse to, yeah, to but then use you, your you've, mastery. You've, you've, you, you have to the, use it on uh, a thousand enemies, though. Okay, so. I, mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're the, saying. It's not the amount of uh, the combat that's the problem. It's when the combat system isn't mm -hmm. as fun yeah. as the amount of that, combat okay, you have to okay, do. That's sure. In something totally. like Super Mario RPG, where mm -hmm. it's like timing-based... Each battle can be really like skill based. You can you can try hard mm -hmm. and you can win and you can dodge all the damage and stuff. But like in a in a generic bare bones like uh, everyone's like a gay elf and they're yeah, wizards yeah. and they go and <laughs> we're anime <laughs> characters. Uh, and the combat is the worst thing of all time. Mm -hmm. And it's the same length. I hate it. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Okay, even if the story is okay. One last question. Uh, before we fucking head out of here, mm -hmm. Kenneth Crayley asks, "What type of content does YouTube need more of?" Um, my answer mm. to that is irreverent shit. Like, what I want less of is like cultural commentating, analysis, reviews, like, or people just like responding to each other. I want more stuff that's just creative and weird and funny. And, like, need, that I won't get anywhere else, you know? We need uh, more Maximus Thor's more, in the Maximus world. Maximus Thor is a good example. Potion Seller, the guy who did that, like, yeah, uh, yeah. or GMC <laughs> Faux Show. Like, stuff like that where it's just, like, you know, the YouTube channel has an identity. It's one type of content, but it's, like, something that is wholly unique to themselves. And it's not beholden to trying to be popular on YouTube. It just is a good idea, you know? Well, you know, in response to this specific question, the answer might be uh, nothing. And YouTube needs to die because it's getting too corporate and is well, not supportive sure. of this kind of content. Uh, uh, I, I just think I'm, – I'm thinking video content in general. If, yeah, if you ask yeah, me what's the uh, ideal right, situation, right. we all end up skating from YouTube and everyone becomes way weirder because the we are not trying <laughs> right, to pursue right. algorithmic success anymore, you know? One of my favorite things about YouTube is how you could like up to now you've been able to just say the word fuck and it didn't matter yeah. you could see it at any time that's in any video that's one of the greatest things about the entire fucking platform yep 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 and now it is gone it is gone yep hashtag demonetize uh tom <laughs> hippo you guys got hashtag explosive. I, I kind of agree with you digi i think there just needs to be more stuff on youtube and in the web in general that's less about trying to game the system to make money and to just make cool shit I think we had yeah. that for a while. I think early YouTube was all about that because there was no financial incentive in the mix at mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. you know? And I remember that. That's I how feel... where I found M. Strange and all this, and I think his stuff's fucking fantastic, and it wasn't about make money. It was just, like, cool, crazy shit. We need more just, yeah, just, like, esoteric, bizarre out there. Just, like, I want to make this because I want it to exist, not because I want to make a paycheck. Yeah, man. Now go to my Patreon and give me money <laughs> so I can do that. Um... Davu says he needs more of the channels that he's been trying to catch up on to announce one-year hiatuses. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was gonna say like if 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 YouTube is only like the really good shit, there will just be less. It'll it'll re, it'll result in less people being able to make it on YouTube. But I think that would be better because. Uh, some people just don't have any good ideas. <laughs> the field is a bit crowded now. Though I wonder if it would put us in a situation where the people on the top just stay there. Kind of like the, uh, you know, like the, the Stephen Colbert channels and whatnot are just like cementing their place at like the top echelons uh, what of what I YouTube think, has right now. What I expect to happen over the next few years, if this kind of shit keeps happening, is that gradually a lot of the YouTubers on like the, like, several hundred thousand subs or even million sub levels will start mm -hmm. vacating the site and yeah. all the you know all the in industry shit will still be there but the audience right. wants those other guys like the audience is here for the the homegrown youtube content once that shit leaves there's not going to be enough people watching the colbert shit on youtube got to hope that happens that's my hope too I, either it'll cause youtube to shrink and become just netflix 2.0 which at some point will just mean Netflix will buy it and completely change it. <laughs> or, like, you know, 
wait, was there an or? Or they'll just die. Yeah, that's the other one. I, I think they will become purely corporatized in time. I think that's what they they're will already be working. In, I mean, they time. have YouTube TV. That's exactly what they're yeah. already on their way to do. Yeah, and and for yeah. what it's worth, yeah. I I don't even blame YouTube entirely for this because like they are too big. It was too good of a service for us. Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Like I think. This idea of fully democratized content, as beautiful as it was, was doomed to fail because not, like, we don't have the server space for every fuck off to make videos, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. in the world at, at this point. We need this post scarcity society to, to come along and fix that. But, like, it's interesting because, mm-hmm. like, there's a new website, uh, BitChute. I don't know if anyone's heard of that site I yet, but it's a, not yet. It's, it's, a, it's a new YouTube competitor. And it's peer to peer, so it's all torrent based. Oh. But it's you host your videos and then you like download torrents, okay. that's and that's cool. how you. So they they don't have any server space to worry about because it's all peer to peer. I can easily see that being part of the the future. You know, like I can see how that. Interesting. Yeah, I was talking about that in the comments or in the chat earlier about how the Ethereum network. I don't know if you guys know anything about that. It's like a project right now that's like, I, I, I don't know much about it. I want to do more research into it. But I, the general idea is that it's a peer-to-peer internet. So the entire network basically is designed mm-hmm. to replace the web as it is now. And it's all decentralized and peer-to-peer. So there's no central servers hosting anything. Thank God. Fascinating. Fascinating. And uh, I, it can't come fast enough. <laughs> well. I guess that's about it, everybody. Yeah. Uh, any other? I th- yeah, I think I think think we're good. So everybody, uh, remember, most of those questions this time came from our private Discord. So please go on over to Patreon.com/slash/theprocrastinators, pledge a dollar or more, and you'll be in there, baby boy. And then we'll be able to see your and shit. If you uh, if you pledge five dollars or more, you get to watch the bonus episodes every month that we make. That's the real shit. That's that's what you really want to be signed up for. There's seven of them right now. The last one, we'll rape your ears to death. You want <laughs> to be in on that. Uh, yeah. Everyone's commenting about like how uh, that that like I've seen some people being like, "Is this a real episode? Is this a real bonus episode? It's more real than anything I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> it, is, it, it is. It is everything. You're this end up is having exclusively to pull, uh, a Dick Masterson into a second bonus episode. <laughs> uh, was... Most people love it. I heard. I heard one warrior was like, "Guys, I fucking made it through somehow. I survived <laughs> all the way through. I was just like, damn, dude, it fucking impressed shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I." I've heard uh, a single bonus episode except the one I was on. Oh yeah, yeah. There, um, there's some intense shit. Got a binge <laughs> They're in one intense. Day. Uh, and uh, what else we got? We got some merch. If you want to buy some uh, PCB merch, there's some links down below. Uh, oh, ask us more questions. Use uh, hashtag AskPCP, and we read some Twitter questions here as well. And I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Uh, uh we are still on no? iTunes and Google Play now. iTunes and Google Play, of course. Times. That's right, everybody. If you like iTunes, Google Play, you want to hear your shit there. We got it. It's it's real. It's real. It exists. So We're go everywhere. fucking listen I do, to it. I do. We do whatever. We are like a salad kind of <laughs> lettuce guy, you know. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but hey, that's life. That's living. All right. Thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 And I'll say bye from Davu. Bye from Davu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm supposed to be working right now. I'm supposed to be working right now. But I'm not working. I'm doing nothing. My dick, I'm jerking. Myself, I'm so.